What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone and welcome to another Gravity Falls analysis video. We just finished the entirety of Gravity Falls Season 1, so now I am going to be going back through the entire season and trying to find all the things that I missed and trying to break all the codes that we couldn't figure out and it's going to be an insane video. You've probably seen the length of this video and what I will tell you is that if it's like a couple of hours long, it probably means I've been recording for like four hours in total. So make sure that you subscribe and we will have more content like this in the future. I just want to say before we get into this that a lot of people have been asking if I'm going to be uh, reacting to the shorts and that is going to be a big resounding yes. I'm going to try to basically cover all of the content that I can in this series because I'm loving Gravity Falls, I'm not going to lie. And the season one um, cliffhanger, I guess, it, 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 it sets up season two so well. Um, so I really want to kind of go through all of the content that we need to before we get to season two. With that being said, after this very video, I'm probably going to be taking a little bit of a break from Gravity Falls content. It will only be like a week or two. Um, but before we get into like properly into like season two, um, I just want to take a little bit of a break because of course I have been on the grind with this. We've reacted to the entirety of season one in just two weeks. So I'd say it's pretty good going and I'd say let's get into code breaking. Okay, so there's a few things that I want to focus on today. Um, first of all, we have a lot of codes here, or three codes, that we don't, we, we, we understand, we, we've got the right uh, code, we've got the right, what am I trying to say? We've decoded it, right? But we don't know what these mean. Like, what does homework the candy mean? Who stole the capers? Happy now, Ariel? I think maybe Little Mermaid or something. But we also don't have a code for episode 20. We kind of... We, figured, we finished the end of the season and I was so hyped that I kind of tried to get the code. And when I realized it was a different cipher, then I was kind of like, okay, we'll do this in today's video. Uh, what I also want to do is I want to go through each episode. Yes, every single episode in the series. And I want to write down whether we see a Bill Cipher cameo because he always says that he's always watching, right? That, that's one of his last lines in the series is he spins the wheel around that we've seen so many times now and he says, I'm always watching. <laughs> and so I, I want to see, because there's been a lot of cameos of Bill Cipher, I want to see if he's in every episode because that's going to be really cool. And then, of course, woodpeckers. So woodpeckers seems to be just a really common theme in this and that's, um, that's because of Irrational Treasure where we learn that it was legal to marry woodpeckers in Gravity Falls. I also want to look to see in each episode if we see contents of the book. Obviously, not in every episode we see inside the book, but in some of them we do. And so I want to see if there are uh, a lot of kind of codes in those pages. And speaking of which, I have a feeling that in some of these episodes, there are going to be some extra codes, some backwards messages, some extra things to decipher, especially in Dreamscaperers. So... I think we're going to go through all of that today. And if there's anything else I missed, I'm sure we'll pick it up on the way. Gonna start with the these codes. Um, why does, okay, never mind. Gonna start with these codes. So first of all, we have Summerween, which says brought to you by Homework the Candy. So I've had to think about this outside of the episodes. Um, and it's really, it's a really strange one brought to you by Homework the Candy. It sounds like an advert. It sounds like a commercial, right? Brought to you by washing machine, unnamed washing machine. It's it's almost like maybe Homework is the candy. And I, I seem to recall that in Summerween, we do see a lot of names of bad candies, but I didn't go through them all. So let's go back to that episode and see if that's what I missed. All right, Summerween. So I think it's, it, it's in... It's here. It's here, right? There we are. There we are. <laughs> That's an easy find as well. Um, so we got some candy spiders. We've got gelatin product. I love that. I called it out in the episode. Sand pop. Homework the candy, of course. Uh, 1.7 ounces. Mr. Adequate bar. Chocolate flavor. 
uh, chocolate flavor, uh, and count discount. That's really funny. Okay, so that's that one. So we've solved that one. And then carpet DM. So I'm, I don't even know if I'm going to get this one. Who stole the capers? I don't really know what capers are. And I, I have, maybe, maybe I got the thing wrong and it's actually who stole the carpet because that could be quite interesting. But I don't, I don't think it is. Because if you look at this code, right, uh, we have C, A, 16 is going to be um, three more from M. So M, N, O, P. So it's definitely a P. But my concern is maybe I've written it down wrong and it's actually an 18. So then it would be R. But then E, like fifth, five is never going to be a P. So I don't think it is carpet. I think it's capers. Um, let's have a look in the episode to see if there's anything I missed again. Oh, we have some books here. Wait. Uh, the biggest rom-com of the year. Oh, no, she didn't. <laughs> if the love fits, date it. Smooch Town. Boy Cray Cray. Oh, my gosh. That's a Bill Cipher. Uh, I'm in love with a girl named you. Won't you be my boo? Okay. Oh, no, those are, um, those are songs, not books. Uh, okay. But I have a feeling it's going to be something like that. Something really small that we don't we don't really care about. Oh my god, is that the FNAF 4 box? <laughs> uh, oh, interesting. I just saw on that frame. Uh, yeah, boys. Mabel has a book and it says boys on it. So it's a, um, it's a reference to the future episode, Boys Crazy or whatever. That's insane. I love all the foreshadowing in this. Oh, there you go. They show up there. Oh my gosh. It's really funny, all of the foreshadowing in this. It's crazy. Ah! The sibling brothers in the case of the caper case caper. Jenkins W. Jenkins. The case of the caper case caper. Okay, cool. So that's what that's a reference to. Uh, very strange code for that episode. They could have literally done anything else. They could have said something about the carpet or they could have like done a funny thing about, I don't know, brain swapping or something like electrons or something. But no, they chose a random book in the episode that's got nothing to do with the episode. So fair enough. It's just, it's just how these codes are going to go. So that one is also solved. Okay, so that's good. So now the next episode, Boys Crazy, Happy Now Ariel. There might be a character named Ariel. Uh, that's what I'm thinking. So I'm going to have a look through. You're free. Guys, I've I've literally gone through the entire episode, um, which has taken a while, and there's no Ariel. So I'm thinking maybe I I want to say it's like a Little Mermaid reference, but there's no there's no reason why there would be a Little Mermaid reference. It's like up here how it says not HG Wells approved, right? And that's relating to the time traveling episode because HG Wells had a book called The Time Traveler. Um, maybe it's something like that, where in this, it's like a reference to Ariel, because, you know, Ariel, Ariel couldn't talk, um, above water. She was, she fell in love with, it has a similar plot, where it's like, she fell in love with, um, what's his name? Is he a prince? Prince? I can't even remember. I don't even remember the story of the little moment. I need to rewatch that. Do, 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 do. Um I'm going crazy. I don't know what this means. I'm not gonna lie. I give up on that one. Um this is the first time in the series I think I'm actually giving up on a on a clue. Um because I, I genuinely just don't I don't know. I don't know what that means. Um, Happy Now Ariel. The only thing I can think of is The Little Mermaid. So here is the first time in the series where I'm saying, you are now allowed to tell me, okay? You are now allowed to tell me what this one code means. I'm not saying you're now allowed to tell me anything else in the series, just this one code. So if you want to tell me in the comments below, feel free. Um, of course, if it's spoiler, spoilery for like other episodes and stuff, don't give me context, but just tell me like what, what this means, um, if I'm correct with like the Little Mermaid thing, and then we can mark it green. But no, I, I don't know what that means. 
I genuinely have no idea. Okay, and then the final episode in the series, Gideon Rises. This has a number code, right? And then what we did in the last episode is we tried to plug this into our cipher that worked for all of the others that were previously A1Z26. All of these, right? All of these worked. This one didn't. I have a theory uh, and I haven't tested it, so that it could be completely wrong. And you'll see that I've written up here, Caesar cipher additive, at bash cipher multiplicative, A1Z26 cipher substitution. So the reason I've written all of that is because these seem like they're very, very similar codes, but actually in terms of code breaking and ciphering, they are so far apart from each other. So Caesar cipher and at bash cipher, obviously they're both to do with letters. Like I came to this episode and I was like, oh my gosh, the Caesar cipher isn't working anymore. Um, and then we figured out that it was just a completely different cipher altogether, the at bash cipher. But these do look very alike. Like you can admit they, they look like they would be the same cipher, but they are completely different. And the reason they're completely different is because one of them is taking the alphabet and it's shifting it three letters back, okay? And that's your cipher. This is what the Caesar cipher is doing. You're taking a D and it's turning it into an A. It's literally, as you can see right here, this is how the program works. You are taking the full alphabet and it's just three letters back, okay? So a Z, where it would be here, it's now here. A Z turns into a W, an A turns into an X, C turns into a Z, etc. An at bash cipher, sure it's the same in the sense that it's turning a letter into a letter, but it's not additive, it's not shifting the letters at all, it's literally flipping the letters on its head. Therefore, it's multiplicative. So you can see, uh, it, it's basically multiplying all of this, it's taking the inverse of the alphabet, it's multiplying it by negative one. So an M is an N, oh sorry, an M is an N, and an N is an M, an A is a Z, and a Z is an A. You're timesing it by, by minus one. Think of it as like um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, all the way up to minus thirteen. What's minus thirteen times minus one? It's A, which we said was thirteen. Uh, what's uh, minus three times minus one? It's three, which we said is K. So it's it's multiplying a letter by, the, uh, it, it's inversing a letter in the alphabet basically. So it's multiplicative. So what my theory is, and and, and obviously A1, Z1, uh, Z26 is really simple. It's literally just a substitution. So one symbol is equal to another. And I'm sure we're gonna get more of that sort of substitution later on in season two. Um, my theory is because these are so different I think it's possible that this could actually be a combination of an A1Z26 cipher and a Caesar or an Atbash cipher. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this in here and then we're gonna take these letters and put it through a Caesar or an Atbash and it's gonna give us something. I wanna test if that's true. Okay, so we have a six, we have an 18, a nine and a six and then 4, 16, 19, 22, 12, 15, oops, 15, 10, 20, 19, 25, 19. So this is a bunch of gibberish, right? But I think if we take this, oops, okay, hang on. If we copy this and we put it into the Caesar cipher here, uh, paste as values. That hasn't worked. Okay, let's try at bash. Hmm. It's not, it doesn't seem to be right. Okay, so here's the other test. It's possible it's all three, right? So we're going to take the A1Z26 cipher put it in the Caesar cipher, and then copy this and put it in the at bash cipher. Here we go. Okay, 
That's not correct, but there is still one more combination that we can do, which is we take the A1Z26, put it in at bash here, and then take this and put it in the Caesar cipher. That's gonna be different to doing it the other way around because as I say, multiplicative and then additive, it's not the same if you do it the other way around. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay, I think we're, we're pretty close. So it says, search for the blind eye. Search for the blind eye. I, I, I clearly did something wrong here. Um, so let's see what we did wrong. So I said 5, 19, 23. Let's have a look at the actual episodes code. Okay, so we have 5, 19, 26, uh, 23, 6. Uh, yeah, I did, I did this wrong. I copied it wrong. So let's have a look. Um, <laughs> look at them looking at, <laughs> looking at the screen like, whoa. <laughs> 5, 19, 23, 6. Uh, 2116 is one word, 1896, 4, 16, 19, 22, 12, 15, 10, 20, 19, 25, 19. Okay, that is correct. So, we put this up here. But how, but why, why is it showing? Oh my gosh, it's because, okay, so I need to do this. Ah, uh, that's why, okay. So let's, let's see what's wrong with this. So 23, 6, 21, 16. So that's going to be search. And then it's 18. So it's not a separate word. So it is going to be... Uh, okay, let's just do it properly. So we take these letters, we copy it, we put it in the at bash cipher. It's weird how we're going backwards, right? It's almost like we're going backwards in time. Uh, because the Caesar cipher was the first one. So search for the blind eye. Search for the blind eye. It's interesting, right? Because, um, because this is the last episode in the season. This code has to be relevant, like, like really relevant to everything. And it's, it really does seem relevant, especially when we're talking about eyes and Bill cipher is, is, right there um search for the blind eye okay i don't know what that means um what i'm going to do is i'm going to put it as orange for now because we don't know what it means but we have the code it's it's really cool that's a really really cool one actually um so search for the blind eye i don't think we can get it yet that's the thing i think that that's left mysterious um just because it's mysterious, like for mystery's sake. Um, and I think the reason for that is, is because it's setting up season two as well. Maybe that's what Grunkle Stan is doing in the final episode. He is searching for the blind eye. Okay, I think that that is good. I think we've got a pretty good grasp of all of the codes in here. Uh, it looks like, okay, maybe I need to do this. Maybe if I merge these cells together, uh, how do I do that? Here we go. And then I can put it in the middle. So all of this, all of these codes together is search for the blinder. Actually, no, this looks awful. <laughs> okay, so we got A126 to at bash to Caesar. Um, okay, cool. So that's a, a combination of, of ciphers there. So cool. Yeah, we have a good grasp on the codes. So I think that that is enough code breaking for now. And what I want to do is I want to fill out this grid now. Uh, and we're going to begin with the introduction, uh, the introduction of the show. So, so bear with me, obviously by the end of the video, we're going to see the great codes that I'm sure are in episode 19 and 20, because I'm sure that they are full of, of lore and stuff. So. We're going to start with the introduction in episode one uh, and just kind of see if there are any codes that we've missed or anything. Okay, here is what I'm gonna do. I am literally going to go through the intro frame by frame to just make sure that I get everything, okay? So I'm going to come back to you. Speedy Beaver! Looks like we've got uh, the theme of beavers as well appearing throughout the episodes quite a lot. I, I don't think it's in every episode, but uh, 
Piedmont. Piedmont. Is that ca Canadian? Because I, I see um I see the word pied, and that is French. That's that's French for walk. Um, it also looks like we got. Is that Grunkle on the side? I've never noticed that. So Piedmont. Uh, let's have a look where Piedmont is. Piedmont. Oh, it's Californian. Uh, a region of Italy bordering France. Oh, wait, what? I thought, I thought it said um, California. Oh, it's a city in California. Ah, okay. So it's a city in California, but it's also a region in Italy, uh, bordering France and Switzerland. Sits at the foot of the Alps, known for sophisticated cuisine and wine such as Barolo. Turin, the capital, has abundant Baroque architecture and the monumental landmark Mole Antonelliana with its soaring spire. Uh, what's it famous for? Uh, annual festival, whatever. I actually think it's, it's probably California. Um, because, obviously, they live in the States, uh, Dipper and Mabel. Uh, they're not Italian. Uh, unfortunately, because I, I love Italian culture and stuff like that. Uh, small city located in Alameda County, California, United States. Uh, Oakland. Why is that familiar to me? Why is Oakland... Um... I don't know. Because, okay, so where where is California compared to Oregon? Because Gravity Falls is in Oregon. So... This is Oakland right here. That looks like a very nice place to live, actually. Um, so that's Oakland there. Sorry, guys. I don't know anything about um, US geography. But it seems like California is very close to Oregon. In fact, can we... Uh, is there a way to see, like, how far away these are? I don't, I don't know if there is. But um, it, it seems like Oregon is over here. And that's this region here. So, literally, if Dipper and Mabel live right here, is that right? Is this California? Oh, yeah, that, that is California. Okay. So, California's here, um, and it seems like Dipper and Mabel come from here, and then Gravity Falls is somewhere in Oregon here. So, that's cool. That's cool um, in terms of, like, geography, and that's the US. And I live over here. <laughs> Or over on this tiny freaking island in the middle of freaking nowhere. Look how big the US is compared to that. Anyway, cool. Continuing frame by frame. Okay. Uh, okay, world famous enter. The S falls off. That's cool. That's a great foreshadowing there. Be amazed. There's a dollar sign. There's an ear in a glass that I didn't realize before. Uh, don't know what that thing is. It's like a rabbit. Rabbit creature with antlers uh bigfoot within a bigfoot i love this this shot it's great uh okay cool what was that by the way oh leaves okay imagine if it was like a seek oh my god oh <laughs> No way! Did we just catch Bigfoot? No way he's been in every intro and I just haven't spotted him. That's so funny. That's amazing. That just proves that this show is freaking fantastic because you go through this frame by frame and you see things that you just haven't seen the entire time. I love that. Okay. So... These runes we need to analyze. I'm going to go back to that in a second because we've done a lot of code breaking already. Um, okay. Cool animation by Dipper, by the way. Uh, Mabel is here. Love her. <laughs> okay, we've got Grunkle with a cash machine. Stan, okay. Uh, we seem to have Pit is a, is a brand of drink. Uh, probably alcohol, I guess, or probably just a soft drink. Um, we have, so there's, there's like a bat in the background as well. Uh, that's actually horrifying. Got all these eyeballs that look like that turn to us. Okay, and then this is a thing as well. Uh, there seems to be runes up there that we can also try to decode. I don't know if they're runes. 
but they look like they are some sort of code. So I think we might need to take a screenshot of that. Um, I think we've had a, look, had a look at this before, uh, but there's a lot of triangles. There's obviously the three here. There's some weird code stuff here. And then all the alchemy symbols at the bottom, absolutely. Um, oh, there's there's the shot of uh, boys. There you go. Uh, that we that we saw before. And then magic, uh, not a magic eight ball, but a, a billiard eight ball seems to be a common theme in the show as well. Obviously, Grunkle Stan has that cane. Now let's have a look at this, right? So it's crazy that in episode one we saw all of this. Okay, and I haven't even looked at it properly yet. So let's have a look. So this top left thing, don't know what that is. Um, it's like a, it's an underwater alien thing. Could be, uh, could be like a gobblewonka sort of thing. We have the gnomes and of course the bite mark at the bottom right. We have Gideon here. I didn't realize Gideon was in the intro, crazy. Don't know what the top thing is between here. This is the rabbit antlers things uh, rabbit antler things that we see in that that I saw before that I called rabbit antlers. Uh, interestingly, we have Blendin Blandin, top right. Never seen him there before, or never recognised at least. This seems to be the water tower that the big muffin is on. UFOs. Wow, there's UFOs here. Wow, and then of course the Summerween candy monster. Really cool foreshadowing everywhere. Don't know what that is. No idea. That is the dinosaur. That's the pterodactyl from the 18th episode. Land Before Swine. There's the Pines family and uh, Susan Wendy. Okay. Gravity Falls. Uh, it's cool that there's a stamp up here. It's almost like this is like a postcard. Well, a absolutely this is a postcard. There's also a UFO up here, which, funnily enough, I have never seen before. I'm so unobservant. <laughs> okay, and then we have this frame. I want to talk about this before we move on. Um, one last time, okay? We're not going to talk about this again until maybe like the end of season two, because we've talked about this frame so, so much. And I mean, nothing really, nothing much has come of it other than we've seen the alchemy symbols before. This hourglass could be related to blending. Um, seems to be loads of codes around here that we can't decipher. Matrices, I made a short about them recently um, because I think that's a really cool detail about like 2D into 3D projection, possibly. Uh, and and knowing, um, knowing almost Bill's motives now, well, we don't know his motives. We don't really know who he is still, but it seems like he is able to gain control of things, and it seems it it's like he's like a two D shadow, so he is definitely like two D, two dimensional. Um, but maybe he wants to escape Gravity Falls or something and become part of the real world. I don't know. Um, secret code that says uh, Stan is not what he seems, um, and then we have the Konami code, I believe that's called. Um, don't know why that's there still, and then all of this is also relates to alchemy, so we have, uh, oh, is this earth, wind, uh, something, something, what's this, um, arsenic, I think it is, and then gold and matter, so all of that's fine. So then the big, the big thing is that, that we saw in episode 19 as well, Dreamscaper, is we have, all of these are different characters, and he said, uh, uh, I'll be watching. All right, I feel like I could I could probably do a really good Bill Cipher voice if I wanted to. I'll be watching. Um, <laughs> so here we have Zeus. Ice. I think Ice is probably Wendy. I, and I say that is because I don't know what else here could be Wendy, if you know what I mean. Uh, Ice is probably related to Wendy because of the Time Travelers episode um, where, you know, Dipper goes to get ice for Wendy's eye, and no matter what happens, no matter what, uh, in all universes except for one, Wendy's eye gets bruised. So I have a feeling like this this represents like the inevitability of that episode, uh, and so potentially this is Wendy. Of course, there's also the ice in the in episode number five where they all go to the convenience store. Uh, Grunkle Stan. 
100%, okay? Dipper Pines here, Gideon, uh, the author of the book. And here's, here's something that I didn't talk about last time in my last analysis video where we went through who might be the author of the book. What I didn't mention is that it seems separate from all of the other characters here. So it, it can't be Grunkle because, because Grunkle is separate. And now we know as well from episode 20 that it wasn't Grunkle because he's, he's received all three books, it seems like, for the first time ever. So he didn't write the books. He's just received them. So it seems like he's a different character. And I have a feeling, like, my best bet right now is Old Man McGucket. Uh, I said in that last episode that it could be Gucket or it could be the president. But now that I think about it, like we've we've seen Gucket a lot and it could be really good foreshadowing for a really good twist. Um, and he's, he's crazy. He has loads of potions and he has loads of robots and stuff. He made the Gideon robot like he's he is very powerful. So maybe it is it's uh, it's old man McGucket, the llama. So the llama is not Mabel because in Bill, in the second to last episode, Bill Cipher calls Mabel shooting star. So who's the llama? Uh, I'm thinking it could be the goat or it could be the, uh, it could be Waddles or it could be someone else that we haven't met yet. It could be a season two character. Either way, uh, don't know who that is really. Uh, it seems like we have two connected to Mabel and then we have Robbie. And then, again, we come back to this, Grunkle Stan. Um, he has these exact glasses, and I've compared them outside of videos as well. Or, or while I've been watching the reactions, I've seen that these glasses are identical. So it seems like we have two Grunkle Stans and two Mabels, and I don't know what that is. But it seems 100% to be confirmed that these are all of the characters of Gravity Falls that Bill is the center of. And Bill is always watching these characters. And that's why we're going through all of these episodes and being like, there's Bill Cipher. Because it shows Bill really is always there. He's omnipresent. He's always watching. Um, so I really like that this whole theme of the show. And then always watching as he fades into the black of the intro screen. So really like that. Let's go back to the rooms and stuff and see if we can figure out if they are actually codes or not. All right, I am going to take a screenshot of this. It seems like we've got four symbols here, so I don't know what it could be. So I've kind of just uh, flashed here. So Bill Cipher, yes, we see him in the intro. We don't see a woodpecker, but we do see book contents uh, and extra codes. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking th these runes are, are codes, but we need to look up some runes, I think. Thinking runes to letters converters. Um, Oh, God, this is going to be hard. So, Ansas is a good one, uh, which means God. I, I actually knew that one is, uh, already. And it seems like we do have an F. That's an F right there. Do we have this sort of spiky thing at the top? Uh, no. No, we don't. Oh, this is going to be harder than I thought, guys. Um, what I might do is I might just make sure that I've taken screenshots of all of these like runes and see maybe if there are codes here. Uh, I mean, they could very well not be codes here. I I'm just saying like, I feel like this this could be just like random runes and stuff uh, and they, they aren't identical to some of the runes that we already have because of that, because they made them up. So. Thinking maybe they, it could be made up, uh, but it, it also could be some sort of code language that we don't know yet. Because of course you can make whatever code you want and you can ha try and have people figure it out. Um, you can just use your own symbols at free will and substitute them. Uh, as I say, like A1Z26, you can substitute your own symbols for uh, actual letters or numbers. So that's, um, that's something that I think is a possibility here. Uh, let's see what else is in that book. Okay, what I want to do here is I want to get this first line while it's at the top. This is the first frame we can see it. And I want to copy that and put it in here. So there is our top line. And then I want to get another screenshot when it goes down. Oh, 
it's 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 tough. It's tough to get this. Oh, I don't think this is going to be helpful at all. Um, I'm a bit concerned, guys. <laughs> uh, oh no. So that's that's also almost an, an unsolved code that we can't get yet, um, if it even does exist, as I say. Okay, I think it's finally time to go through episode one to see if we can find a bill cipher, a woodpecker, and some contents of the book, which I know there's definitely contents of the book in here, uh, and just to see if there's any extra codes. Let's go. Oh, interesting. So here we have a map of Oregon. Okay, so prehistoric gardens, La Grande. Uh, we seem to have like roots as well. Cherries, what? Mount Hood, Corvallis, Medford, Indian Reservation. We seem to have deer and then this is a beaver. Is it a beaver? It looks like an otter actually. But Gravity Falls seems to be in the center of Oregon. Okay, so that's that's good to know. I'm assuming this is the sh same shape as we saw on the map as well. Hmm. Oh. Oh, wow. That's cool. Okay, so we have Mabel rolling down the hill. On the bright side of things. Yay! Grunk! <laughs> but I was having a hard time getting used to our new surroundings. Woodpecker. And then Grunk will stand with this Halloween mask that I think actually appears again later on in the series, but I could be completely wrong. So we already have a woodpecker. And remember this design as well, because this is what we see in most episodes, I think. So I can tick off woodpecker, yes. Okay, we have a giant's ear. We have a big eye, just a big picture of an eye. We seem to have, oh my gosh, is that uh, the pterodactyl? Or like a statue of this pterodactyl or something? It's kind of cool. Uh, Jack O.P.? Don't know what that is, but that seems to be, again, this, this weird bunny creature that we keep seeing around. And we have a chandelier with antlers. That's funny. Okay, and then on this shelf, we have a deer with antlers and bat wings. Some weird thing in the top right. No refunds. Okay, there's no fun in... Uh, there's always fun in no refunds or whatever. I don't know what the quote was. Uh, okay, cool. Now, Wendy seems to be uh, reading a magazine for Pit Cola. So there you go, there's Pit Cola again. Uh, it seems to keep popping up. Um, and then we have rooms here again. So I'm gonna take another screenshot. So here's the thing, right? We see this, this shape here, which is like up and then up and then up and up, uh, sorry, and then up and then up and then down and down. And then we have that same shape here. So it seems like maybe we are being consistent. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. I'm a little bit scared about that though. Uh, <laughs> okay, so now we get to the area with this. Okay, and then we see the book. And then on the back of the book, we have some triangles and some, looks like hieroglyph hieroglyphics of like the waves. Uh, three. Okay, so this is the third book. And then he opens it up, property of blank. So it seems to be like they're not hiding this. Or no, sorry, it seems to be like they are hiding the author of this. Like, it's it's not like a, a thing where it's like, oh yeah, it's just a random person. Like, that it seems to be a big law reveal, almost. Uh, volume three. Okay. And then... Why is there a spyglass? Didn't realize that. So June 18th, we, we've, we've been through this before. Um, this is the sort of thing we've been through. It's hard to believe it's been six years since I began searching the strange and wondrous secrets of Gravity Falls, Oregon. Huh. And then here, okay, so we have floating eyeballs. Are they watching me? Always watching. <laughs> I'm gonna keep saying that, I love that line. Um, so yeah, floating eyeballs. We haven't seen floating eyeballs yet, but obviously eyeballs is something we see a lot, uh, knowing what Bill Cipher looks like. Um, lots of squib squibbles. Visible only at night, no retinal cord, no response to contact. Spooky, I think that says. Okay. 
So that's good to know for future. Uh, giant vampire bats. So I'm assuming the vampire bat is what we saw in uh, in the in the boss Mabel episode. Uh, you know, uh, she gave her <laughs> she gave it the key to go on a break for five minutes. That's funny. Um, but yeah, we seem to have vampire bats and. That also seems to be somewhat of a common a common theme, right? Um, because there were bats that in uh, in episode nineteen there were there were bats that Dipper had to clean out. Interesting here, Desmodus rotundus. That sounds like a species name, if I know one. Um, I love this tic tac toe game here as well. It seems like somebody just didn't really try. <laughs> Because also it would be, how did this game, this game is not possible, by the way, because circle has to start. So st circle would go here, X would go here, circle could go here, X would go here, circle here, X here, circle here, X here. So that, that doesn't work. <laughs> but oh, oh well, oh well, whatever. Um... So cool, giant vampire bats. So Desmodus rotundus, that is definitely a species name. Oh, is this, am I gonna, ugh, ugh, that's gross. The common vampire bat is a small leaf-nosed bat native to the Americas. It's one of the three exact ex extinct species of vampire bats. The other two being the hairy-legged and white-winged vampire bats. The common vampire bat uh, practices hematophagy uh, mainly feeding on the blood of livestock. It is extinct. I'm so glad that it's extinct, by the way. Oh, I don't want to look at it. I No, please, no. Ugh. But that's a cool detail. It, it's cool that there is, like, real-life law in this. It's cool that uh, Gravity Falls... Like, it's extinct in our world, but in Gravity Falls, there they still exist in Gravity Falls. Um, so that's really cool. Ten feet wingspan, by the way. Mad. Okay, and then the next page is about gnomes. So this is our foreshadowing for the episode, right? Gnomes, creature number 24. I love how they number the creatures. Danger unknown. Okay. Seems to be loads of weird red circle things here. Like, like almost like stamps. It's it's kind of strange. So you've got gnomes. Is that Shmebulok as well? That's, I think that's Shmebulok. Shmebulok, Shmebulok. I don't, I don't care. I think that's also the leader. 10 inches, I think. 10, no, 10, no, it's not 10 foot. <laughs> 10 inches. Uh, mushrooms here. Weakness, question mark. Um, so it seems like the weakness is leaf blower. Uh, <laughs> pointy hats, of course. Oh, wow. Oh, this is a cool page. Case number 28. Here is our zinc. No, that's not zinc. Uh, that's... No, it's not zinc. It's... Uh, we, we we did see it in a rational treasure. Uh, but, yeah, that's that's an alchemy symbol. Thir number 13 door. Um, wasn't 13... Isn't, un isn't 13 an unlucky number? Unlucky 13. The number 13 is considered an unlucky number in various countries. Um, stri strikingly folkloric aspects of the number 13 have been noted in various cultures around the world. One theory is that, uh, is that this is due to the cultures employing lunar solar calendars. There are approximately 12.41 lunations per solar year, and hence 12 true months plus a smaller and often potentious 13th month. This can be witnessed, for example, in the 12 days of Christmas of Western European tradition. Huh. Interesting. I think uh, 13 is um, it's definitely, yeah, bad luck. Here we go. Yeah, the, it's the fact that uh, the 13 is considered so, so unlucky that some elevators don't include the number 13, which, can I just say, is really dumb. <laughs> it's really dumb. 13 is just a number. Um, but this actually goes back to the numerology thing that we were talking about like the the theory that um that people around the world associate numbers with certain uh like astrological signs and like birthdays and 
stuff like that. They, they actually think that the numbers have a bigger meaning. I personally don't believe in that sort of thing because I think numbers are just numbers. They're there to do maths and nothing more. But I, I think it's interesting nevertheless to see that like this sort of law behind some of the numbers. But yeah, it's definitely considered an unlucky number. Um, and I think it is related to the fact that um, <laughs> Taylor Swift. Uh, I think I think it's due to the fact that you know twelve is a very popular number in, in like um, you know with like time like on a clock there's twelve on a, on a clock and twelve months of the year and things like that. Twelve is like the number, but thirteen is like one too much. Uh, it's almost like dozen and baker's dozen as well. Um, so there you go. So thir door number 13 seems to be unlucky door. Avoid this door on Main Street. So there you go. Um, maybe we'll learn, maybe we'll see someone living in door 13 and we will know, we will know who that is. Uh, uh, little moon here. Um, something moon, it says. Um, <laughs> it's like in, it, let's have a look at moon phases. I'm just remembering when, um, <laughs> When in episode number three, with the wax figures, they were saying, we come out at night when the moon is waxing. That's one of my favorite jokes of the series. It's, it's really funny. But there you go, waxing crescent right there. And then this seems to be, okay, so it seems to be a crescent on the left. So it seems to be a waning crescent, uh, I would say. I, I'd say it's more of a waning crescent than a waxing. Um, don't know if that's relevant at all, just wanted to point that out. Uh, we have more alchemy. We have a door with an eye on it. And, and this this sort of like, this wiggly line around it makes me think this is almost in like the dreamland uh, that we were in in Dreamscapers. Um, it, it feels very reminiscent of that, right? And, and the fact that Bill Cipher said each of these doors leads to different memories and stuff like that. So it is cool that we're getting a lot of door imageries, but cursed doors, seems to be a face here in the door. Knock, knock. Who's there? The forces of evil. Dark energy readings, 40% higher this year. Hmm. Dark energy um, is is most of the universe. Uh, I, would, I think it's like 99% of the universe is dark energy. But of course, we can't see it and we don't really know what it is or what it does. But it, it's strange. We, we seem to be getting like a bigger leak of dark energy or something. I have a feeling Gravity Falls might go down that sort of um, astrological and astronomy sort of route. Um, okay, so it seems... Oh, okay, there was one more page as well. Well, there were two more pages. Wow, there's actually a lot of pages here. Okay, so we have... Okay, wait, I need to do this frame by frame. Okay, so alchemy. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, okay, there's so much here. So, what this reminds me of right here, this reminds me of like lenses and, um, oh, what's it called? Just like light physics, uh, how light works. So if you, basically how your eye focuses is, it you have like a certain focal point and then it comes back to your retinas and the lens the lens adjusts in your eyes to ensure that you're focusing on the right point um, with with like the light. Um, it's really convoluted, but this is almost reminding me of those sorts of diagrams with like the focal point and the focal length and stuff like that. Uh, and this is almost like a lens, but it's also looking a little bit like a projection, as I was saying before, like projection mapping and stuff. Don't know what any of this means, but I have a feeling this is a code right here. Like, of anything on this page, that is a code. And, and and obviously, these pages are put there for a reason. They could have just skipped this page entirely. They could have put random writing or, like, more, like, gnomes or something. But this page exists. And this is very suspicious, I will say. Um, these just random four alchemy symbols. I know that they're alchemy 100%, but they're not going to spell anything. Um, I don't think, at least. I don't think you can convert alchemy symbols to letters unless they're just doing this in the series and I've been missing it this, not this entire time. But that's definitely a code. The reason I'd also say that this is a code is because we have these two vertical lines, but we have that here at the beginning, third letter in, down here as well. 
So it seems like this is consistent, and it seems like this is definitely a code of some sort. I just don't know how we're going to figure this out. Obviously, we could say, like, the most common letters could be an E, uh, or, like, the most common letters here are going to be vowels. Um, so I'm thinking all of these vertical lines could be... Or maybe... Oh! Could it be? Could it be A, E, I, O, U? Guys, I might have figured it out. Um, so A is I, E is double I, I is triple I. It's a bit deceiving. O is quadruple I, uh, U is quintuple I. So what we would have is E something E something something O. I don't know what that could be. And then something U something something something. And then something, 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 something. No vowels in the third word? Oh, no. I don't know about that. Hmm. It was a good theory, I think. But O something E something I. Um... Yeah, I think, uh, I think I'm going to just kind of give up with that one. But... That was a nice thought, I think. Um, I think it could be something like that, though. I just, I think that this could have been really cool if it was, if it was that pattern, if it was what vowel it was in the vowels, uh, because we do have. Oh wait. Oh no, never mind. We do have five vertical lines, and two vertical lines will be the most common because it's e. So I don't know. I, maybe, maybe that is something, but we'll see. And then this page, is that the next page that we see? So this page, oh boy, trust no one, uh, especially not um, Stan. Uh, more alchemy, seems like we have an eye in the middle, like Bill. It looks like this wheel again, but I don't think that anything else is here. We have a question down here, but I don't think that's relevant. Okay, fine. Okay, I, 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 I've just remember. oh my God, there's an axolotl in the back. That's so funny. Um, one of my favorite lines in this series right now is this, because I, I thought of this outside the episode and I want to hear it again properly. Uh, let's listen to this. What's your reading there, Slick? Oh, I was just catching up on uh, Gold Chains for Old Men magazine. See, <laughs> the reason, the reason that's funny now is because we know that Grunkle has one of the books. He has book number one, and he is actively looking for the other two. So when he comes in saying, what are you reading there, kid? He, he actually is quite serious about that. Like, what are you reading? If it's the, if you found the third book, then I want it. Uh, he's actively looking for it. And then, of course, he only gets it when Dipper confesses at the end of the season. Um, 24, <laughs> 24 karat gold uh, chain, uh, gold, gold chains, Gold Chains for Men magazine. That's great. All right, we have this page. This is cool. The Undead Creature number six. We might need to write down the list of creatures, but I'm sure we're going to get it in the book anyway. Uh, more triangles everywhere. Um, can't read any of this. There's a skull right here. Uh, return. Wait, return to library? It says return to library in the top right hand corner. You can't see it, obviously. It says return to library. That's interesting. <laughs> okay, but does he, does this zoom out at all? Because it seems like there's st stuff in the bottom right hand corner as well. Oh no, it just zooms in. <laughs> so there's, there's him looking like normal man. I love this show. It's great. This episode as well is, is really good. So... There is our first Bill Cipher. This is what I mean by Bill Cipher cameo. So what I would say is this is a Bill Cipher cameo because he's always watching. So if we ever see him in any way in the background, uh, like any shapes that make up like a triangle with a circle eye inside of it, that's a Bill Cipher cameo because he's always watching. He could be anywhere and he's, he's looking over the characters. And it, it, it is quite sus right here 
that he's like looking over Dipper's shoulder at the book, it's almost like. And there's also this reflection on the ground, which which is really cool. Um, so that's a Bill Cipher cameo. So I would say that we are right. All of, all three are in episode number one. Uh, let's just see if there's any more extra codes or anything else I want to point out. So of course we have come here, and there is Blendin Blandin right in the back, ducking down to pick up a calculator or something. Cool. So that's a cool detail that we found out before. Uh, I think that's probably it for episode one, actually. Uh, I don't remember there being anything else after this. Uh, okay, she turns it to blow. Okay, cool. There's uh, the pit drink again. Oh, interesting. We have a mirror here and it says, you look great. And then it seems like there's like a sun or an eye behind it. That's sort of reminiscent of Bill Cipher, but it's not triangular, so I'm not going to dwell on that too much. Uh, fragile, it's toppled over, and then we've got a triangle in the back. I'm not going to count that as a Bill Cipher reference, but yeah. And of course, there is Mabel with her grappling hook. It's amazing. It's amazing how this came back at the end of the series. Again, foreshadowing. It's incredible. It's incredible. Uh, so I think that that's, that's probably it for episode one, yeah. And of course, we're not going to forget this this thing here. Um, that's a weird eyeball on the right there. We're not going to forget the, the entry to the vending machine as well, um, which is obviously down to his secret lair, where he has all three books now. And he has like this weird portal thing, and I don't know, there's just so much underneath the actual shack. It's kind of insane. So that's episode one. Uh, I have been recording for an hour and a half. <laughs> so we're going to get through this and I'm sure it's going to take like 12 hours. But you are, I'm sure you have, I'm sure this is an, a massive video. Oh my gosh. Okay. We're going to get through this. We're going to get through. Oh, I've actually just noticed uh, these, these are all similar to this. So it seems like we have some runes. But we also have some symbols. I want to figure this out, to be honest. I really want to figure this out. Um, I bet we can do it. I bet we can. It, it seems to be the same code. It seems to be the same cipher system. All right, we're not, we're not going to solve the, those today because we've got so much to go through. Okay, so let's move on to episode two, The Legend of the Gobble Wonka. And I'm going to try and get through this a little bit faster because obviously in the second episode, I don't think there's going to be any extra codes. We're just looking for a Bill Cipher and a Woodpecker, to be honest. So let's go. All right. So it's interesting that it opens up with Dipper reading about UFOs again. Like I, I haven't seen any UFOs in my first watch through of this. I also like how the wallpaper is pine trees. I think that's really cool. Um... What is that? Child Psychic. Oh, Child Psychic. There you go. So that's um, that's Gideon. And then Wacky News. 100% true. Uh, Beard Grows Man. Weird. That is weird. So it looks like someone made out of a beard. That is freaking weird, man. Uh, I mean, it did say that. Uh, Hamsterball. Monster Photo Contest. Okay. So the hamster ball comes up a few times in the series, I think. We've got... That is an awfully sensual carton of milk. Um, okay. This is them printing money. Again, one of my favourite jokes in the series. Okay, and then we got the intro. Alright, and we're here at the beginning. So we have Lazy Susan here. We have the newscaster guy. I forgot his name. We have Wendy's family. It's, it's really cool how much we've learned about Gravity Falls in the 20 episodes, that we can go back and now understand everything, pretty much. Like, all the design choices and stuff. We have that guy uh, in the back who keeps saying, Get him! Get him! Uh, <laughs> and then this is where we meet the, uh, the main dude of the episode. Uh, we also have Blendin' Blandin' right here. There you go. With the sandwich... Okay, and then, uh, yeah. 
Grunkle Stan, are you wearing a blindfold? <laughs> nah, but with these cataracts, I might as well be. What is that, a woodpecker? Yes! Oh my gosh, I knew I remembered him saying something like that. Ah, oh, is that a woodpecker? So, we might not see a woodpecker in this, but we definitely heard of one. And I think that counts. I think that counts. A mentioning of a woodpecker counts. Um, that's really, that's a really cool one. So it seems like we have a woodpecker in each episode, maybe. Uh, I'm going to keep testing this theory. I know it's so stupid, but it, it, it would be really funny if, if, my, if it's true. Uh, wow, we have some more runes there. I think those are the same ones though, right? Um, I mean, no, they're not, but I'm going to add to my collection. I am probably doing this for no reason, but it's content. <laughs> okay, so here... So here, the, this is what I was referring to on the second to last episode, is these guys reappear later on in the series. Um, and they were first in, they were first there when the hamster ball showed up. So that's, that's kind of cool that they came back. Uh, I knew I recognized them from somewhere, you know. Um, Stan O'War is the name of Stan's boat. And then we have SS Cool Dude. He reminds me of Papyrus, to be honest. You know, Papyrus has that gear under his, um, like, battle suit that says, like, cool dude. Um, I'm a cool dude. Uh, <laughs> right, so we have them going to the island. And then that robot. Well, that could have been the real thing. Uh, they throw all the cameras off. Again, th I think this episode in particular is is mainly just like funny rather than relevant and lore heavy. But nevertheless, it's really cool. I haven't seen any sort of Bill Cipher references though so far. So I'm starting to think maybe there won't be one in every episode. But he was always watching, so I wonder if he's gonna be somewhere in the background or on a sign or something. We'll see. Um, here we come to, this is really spooky, by the way. I hate stuff like this. I absolutely, it terrifies me. Um, but here we have the beavers who just randomly came out of nowhere and started talking, which is really strange, but because that never came up again. Uh, <laughs> he go, he's touching a child. <laughs> uh, the gobble wonker is here. Fantastic. That's that's also one of my favorite jokes. Just going through the glass pane that they're somehow, like, for some reason carrying across a pool. It's so funny. Um, okay, so here's where we see the Gobblewonka really in the flesh. And then here, let's have a look at this frame here, right? Uh, it doesn't seem like there's anything here, but uh, Old Man McGucket is there. I love the Stoic Monthly. That's really funny. Stoicism. Okay. This is cool. I, I didn't realize this frame existed. He's building the Gobblewonka. Okay, cool. He looks very evil. Uh, here we have... Okay, cool. A diagram of the sea monster that's really descriptive. Uh, now with less typos. So that's the Gossipier. The, the guy that we were talking about before. Now with less typos. <laughs> Chaos. Okay. So maybe, maybe the, all of the creatures are robots. What if that was a big twist in season two? That actually all of it was just created by Old Man McGucket. That would be insane. I don't think that is true because I don't know how Bill Cipher would fit into that. But it's interesting. Speaking of Bill Cipher, haven't seen him once in this episode at all in any way, shape or form. Um, this part is really sweet. Okay, but we do have, of course, the real Gobblewonka. That's terrifying. Look at him. Ew. I hate him. And then, yeah, cool. Okay, so that's episode two. So that, that was a lot quicker than uh, episode one. But uh, it seems like we only got a woodpecker mention. No Bill Cipher. One woodpecker mention. No book contents. And no extra codes. All right, headhunters. All right, so here is Bill Cipher up here in the uh, in the window again. Um, it seems like all of the windows in this place have triangles uh, with circles inside. But um, and and of course we have eyes, of course, in the top left hand corner as well. So it's almost like this is connected in a way. But Bill Cipher, there you go. 
There's our Bill Cipher reference. Uh, it seems like Bill Cipher is the one that melted the wax figure. Um, I don't know, like, like maybe, I don't know. Uh, I'm just saying, like, that's that's quite a cool detail. Like, this is quite a strange place to put your Bill Cipher. Um, but yeah. And then I'm mainly just looking for a woodpecker. Um, I can't believe this is what this series has gotten to, but looking for woodpeckers is always fun. There's got to be one around here somewhere when they're outside. It just has to be. Oh, there's Blendin right there. I cannot believe we didn't see him on our first watch. Um, one thing I also want to say is the miner is here. Because uh, he comes back in a future episode. Or it might have been this episode, actually. Never mind. Uh, where, where they try to go into the place that's like... Um, they try and go into the bar and they're like, no miners. And then a miner is just there. The gossip here. There's like a duck. Is that the Empire State Building? Okay. Oh, interesting. Interesting stuff. Oh boy. So right here. Oh, wow. Okay. So this is surprising actually that I've done this as well. Uh, so what is that behind... What's that behind the thing? Is that an Easter egg? Probably not, because it's not moving. But if, if that was like an arm that like went back, like there's, there might be something hidden behind this. Um, but no, I'm, I'm seeing all the familiar characters here. So this is uh, Wendy's dad. This is the free pizza guy. Old man McGucket is here as well. And then you look closer and you realize Blendin Blandin is right here. They had a photograph of Blendin Blandin before they even met Blendin Blandin. So it's, it's weird that Dipper didn't clock that. Uh, no pun intended. Um, and then we have Robbie down here. R Robbie, who we haven't even met yet in the show. So that's that's also... Wow. Okay. I, I, I seem... I Obviously, I'm getting quite surprised at very small things in this. But you kind of have to because th things like this are like... The amazing foreshadowing. Crazy. Sir Dipping Sauce, age 45... Lady Mableton, age 21. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> Dipper is more than twice Mabel's age, clearly. That's great. Okay, he has flame shoes. I I was always really confused with this tattoo. Why does it say bats on the, on like a dagger? But I think it's just stab backwards, like a backstab. Um, which is really funny if that's the intention. Backstab. Great. Uh, he is scoring 9999 on this. Um, he must not have a fun life, really, because he just he's just angry at everything. Uh, can you beat Bicepticus? I love that, Bicepticus. <laughs> That's funny. What are these things, by the way? Because I see them everywhere in this show, but I don't know what these are. Are they televisions? I don't know. Oh, we have a guy wearing a Scarodactyls jacket. Maybe a clue for... Uh, pterodactyls later on. Uh, so here we have... Okay, so suspects. Manly Dan, Old Man McGucket, that fat guy. Oh, the pizza guy, yes. Angry Lady. Is that... Um, is that Lady Lazy Susan? Mikey R. I don't know who that is. Uncle Phil and Susie? don't know who they are, actually. But uh, the oh. others are quite obvious who they are. Ah, yes. I, I forgot we actually go through them. Uh, so that's the lady. Uh, this is someone. He has a gnome as well. That's a cool detail. Now, this episode was just completely wild. Like, like a complete fever dream, to be honest. Um, I still wonder why Grunkle was so obsessed with his wax self. Maybe this is like a, the, the weirdest theory that I could ever make on this series, but maybe the other symbol in that wheel that Bill has, maybe it's the wax figure stand. I don't know. Um, <laughs> or maybe there's two, there's two stands. He does have a, a oh, he does have a photocopier. Um, that prints real, like, we had the Double Dipper episode. Maybe there's actually two stands. Um, so, yeah, that's, hmm, I don't know. There's, there's not, there's not enough evidence to support that. But, uh, I just, I'm trying to figure out why there's, 
a glasses and a Grunkle Stan hat thing and the, the Mabel things as well. It's very weird. All right, so that's all for Headhunters, I think. I don't think there was anything actually there. I didn't see a woodpecker and there were no book contents. So really, it seems kind of like every now and then we'll see a woodpecker and every now and then we'll see Bill Cipher just kind of in the corner or whatever. If it turns out that all of these are yes and just the Le Legend of the Gobble Wonka is no, though, I need to look back in episode two. Um, so that's all I'm going to do for now. Uh, I need to go and live my life a little bit because I've been recording for two hours straight. So I'm going to return to this in a bit, uh, which you'll see right now. All right, and we're back. Um, so for you, it's been probably a few seconds. For me, it's been a few days. So uh, I'm coming back into this after a few days out of it. And I am so excited to get back into this to see uh, what we've got in the rest of the episode. So let's move on to episode number four. This one's going to be interesting. This is where we were first introduced to Gideon, of course. Um, and of course, Grunkle Stan starts out with this big sack where uh, you put the money in the sack and it magically disappears. And then later on after the intro, we have Gideon's dad doing exactly the same thing, uh, essentially, but it's like an entry fee. Uh, and we all know that Stan only does exit fees, so that's not like him. Um, we got a tiger up here, a tiger fist. Okay, interesting, I don't remember seeing that. Uh, we'll return after these imminent ads, and then here we have the Gideon thing. Um, and there you go, there's, there's the tent of telepathy with the star, of course, and we, we theorized that was a little bit like a pentagram. Uh, of course, it's a star, so astrology is still kind of in this, but it's it's a pentagram, and it's got the eye in it, so I wouldn't necessarily call that a, a Bill Cipher cameo, but uh, it's quite close. And then this is this is the thing that we looked at, 6.2% APR, psychic readings may cause a warming sensation in the abdomen. Carla, I've always loved you, but never had the guts to say it. It's interesting, right? This kid in the back, um, I think he was in the uh, Gobblewonga episode, which was two episodes ago now. And I think that, uh, I think I'm saying that because there was a joke in that where Grunkle was seeing like this grandpa with his grand uh, grandchildren and they were like, we love you, uncle, or whatever. Um, and one of the kids looked exactly like Dipper and one of them looked exactly like Mabel. And I think it might have been this kid. Um, so he's popped up again. Also, I never realized that uh, Seuss's arch nemesis is called Deuce. <laughs> Just like in tennis. Um, <laughs> but that never really, nothing really ever happens with that. I thought there would be more to it than that, but uh, it doesn't seem like there, there is. It seems like that never came up again. Come on. Okay, we got a good joke here. Something tell me your name, Mabel. Oh, great joke. The memories of this have actually great. I, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing the nostalgia for you guys as well is even more intense when this came out like over 10 years ago. So uh, seeing this again and seeing me react to it, it, you guys are saying it's pretty nostalgic. And I, I can now kind of see why, because I'm even getting nostalgia watching these episodes back. And I've only watched the, I only watched them two weeks ago. Uh, it's crazy how far we come in two weeks. Um, here's the full crowd. You've got the pizza guy. He's not wearing the pizza shirt this time. Uh, some of the guys from fishing. Uh, that's the that's the grandpa. Uh, got the police officers here. We don't have a blending, so uh, that's that's good. <laughs> that's good to hear that we that there's no blending. Uh, although this kid with the camo shirt can't really see him, so maybe he's blending. I'm kidding. It's a camo shirt. <laughs> oh, one thing that I didn't point out. What was that? That was my keys. One thing I didn't point out from episode three that I did notice uh, while editing, and I, I haven't brought it up actually, is that at the end of episode three, you have the credits and Mabel's like trying to pick a jumper and she's like, do I have the star or do I have the llama? And then she's obviously asking Dipper and then the head in the vents um, of, what's his name? I forgot, I forgot who it was, but the head, the wax head that's still in the vents, um, he's like, the llama head or the llama jumper or whatever. And then she's like, thanks, Dipper. Um, and then in episode number four, in episode number four, she's wearing that llama jumper. So 
it's interesting the continuity of this this right because it, it seems like all of these episodes are are in um a continu in a in an, in a particular order right which is really good to know because like even like a lot of the episodes seem like one-offs almost but it's good to know sometimes how they're connected uh to the other episodes that's something i really appreciate now hang on a second I'm confused. Why does this book say two on it? Was that a mistake? Hang on. <laughs> what? Girly stuff with me. You and Suze get to do boy stuff all the time. What do you mean? Hey, dude, you're ready to blow up this. Oh, and I, <laughs> I've, I've just been sat there looking at the book the entire time. The book actually just disappears between scenes. It's a continuity error. There you go. Look, the, the book is there. The book isn't. It just disappears. And uh, am I am I high? <laughs> I swear that book has a two on it when it should be the third book, right? Is that just a mistake? That's interesting. I'm going to say that's a mistake, but if that's intentional, then there's something weird going on here. Uh, but fine. Okay, we have uh, what I assume here is, is Seuss reading Gideon and Mabel in some magazine. And Grunkle Stan also has this newspaper with like a silhouette of Gideon and Mabel. So it seems to be pretty widespread in the town. Um, Mabel doing in the paper next to that crazy Yeah, there you go. Little Gideon's little girlfriend. Great. Now with less something at the top. Oh yeah, this is the first time in the series I was like proper upset. <laughs> Again, there's nostalgic value of this. Oh no. Mabel Mabel's not here. She's in Sweater Town. <laughs> oh, every time. Okay. Um, but yeah, the, I, I'm not really seeing anything else. I really like the name and the style of this restaurant. I kind of want, I kind of want to stop YouTube and just make a restaurant that looks like this, or like have four restaurants and each of them are, are different, um, different suits in, in a deck. I'm such a joker. Um, but I really like the aesthetic of this. Um, doesn't seem to be anything on the menu. Pendant or whatever. There's a... What is... Okay. Sure. Looking at all the pictures of Mabel, that's kind of gross. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. And in this episode, uh, we talked to Toby Determined. Um... Which, by the way, is a is a play on words of to be t determined or whatever. Anyway, uh, we talked to Toby Determined, who in the last episode we accused of um, of killing the wax grunkle. Um, and then I think Dipper has a line here where he says, oh, sorry, last week for uh, for accusing you of a murder. Uh, so then again, that there's the there's the continuity there. Um, you know what? I just realized at the end of this episode, we get introduced to book number two. So maybe that was foreshadowing for book number two, but I don't really know why they would do that because it's it's quite deceptive. And if you see that on the first watch, you're like, wait, why does why does Dipper have book number two? Um, but yeah, I, I guess, yeah. Um, this is really cool. I wish it came more. I wish we saw more of it. So here we go. Here is a peek into the book what I, all i'm gonna say is i'm gonna say um the bill cypher cameos in a way of you know gideon's logo is sort of like a bill cypher i think uh the system is fricked at this point anyway but we're, like we're not gonna see bill cypher in every episode but i think this is quite interesting what that looks like to me is is like multiverses like kind of branched timelines. Um, I'm probably completely wrong with that. But like, oh, you know what this matches with? It sort of matches, not quite actually. It, it kind of matches what's in the intro. This is the mystic amulet. Um, this is in book two, obviously, and that's, that is what Gideon has. Uh, let me just finish this episode before going back. Oh, it's just, it's just Sue's dancing. Okay. It kind of reminds me of this at the top, um, although not really. Um, it's it's quite far off, and again, 
there's no really there's no w real way to solve that at this point so um so fine 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 so i'd like to say that yes we sort of saw bill cipher i guess in the form of gideon and the gideon uh star thing woodpecker i didn't see one uh and we do get book contents all right let's go to episode number five the inconveniencing once again we've got some more runes down here they seem to keep popping up, and they seem to be different every freaking time, which is not helpful in any way. But this is this doesn't match any of the others that we have currently. Um, although that looks like the same sort of perspective as the one above, but we we seem to be getting a lot of like similar symbols. I don't know if it's gonna make any code or anything, but we we're getting a lot of runes here. Uh, it's just quite interesting that there's so many I, I guess it's just how the animators are kind of filling in the empty space right but i don't know oh here yeah i, I did notice this on our first watch is we have ufo sightings here there is a lot of ufo foreshadowing by the way uh that i didn't even realize i, I feel like i've been picking up on ufo sightings quite a lot throughout the episodes but i haven't pieced together that we've had so many it seems like we're getting a lot of ufo references and we haven't seen any ufos yet unless maybe i've missed like a secret frame just like the sasquatch or whatever it was uh that we saw but um it seems like there's gonna be a ufo at some point there has to be i feel like this is all foreshadowing uh there's also the possum monthly magazine and we did see possums in episode number two uh i think that was like not a not a main plot point but it was it was pretty pretty there um also oregon at the bottom right okay fine i something i've always been curious about as well is these shapes around this door don't think it's going to going to amount to anything but like circle square square circle circle square square circle square circle square circle square like it and there's a random triangle up here uh bill cipher <laughs> uh but it, like it seems like there's just a lot of of like random things like this which look like codes but you can never tell if it is actually a code or not like that that looks like it could be a code right but maybe i'm thinking too deep into this merman there's a merman here uh but it's not no mermando so i don't think we have to worry about that um oh yeah i forgot this was this episode i i'm not a massive fan of this episode in the grand scheme of things actually it does set up uh dipper and wendy's sort of weird relationship but um but it, it i'm not a massive fan um guys guess what i just saw i saw some more runes <laughs> i don't know if it's worth even screenshotting all of these but i'm gonna do it anyway because if it is something we're gonna have to go back through anyway oh it's the same as before so here's the thing right oh here's the thing right it, it seems to be staying consistent. Like we seem, like we've seen this twice. We've seen this one twice. So it seems to be consistent animation, which which I like. I, I think it's really good. Uh, it's a really good attention to detail there. But like, does that also mean that this is a sequel code or does it just mean that the animators built a room and they've done multiple scenes in this room? Like, I, I, I don't know. Uh, it's It's, it's hard to know, right? Like, it, when we're talking about FNAF canonicity, um, that's a thing. Uh, that's <laughs> that's a thing that's always ongoing. But like, Gravity Falls, I'm sure it's going to be a lot clearer with everything else. I just I just want to know if something's a code, if it if it's there. Also, Bill Cipher rug in the background that I have never seemed to notice. Something that's really funny that I didn't notice in my reaction is that. There is foreshadowing for the Lammy dance. I didn't realize this. Maybe I just wasn't paying attention. But um, yeah, they, they show the Lammy dance uh, or uh, Dipper as a lamb uh, right at the beginning. And then right at the end, of course, he does the the Lammy dance. And I didn't piece that together when I was reacting. It's it's the sort of thing where like when I'm reacting, I'm I'm kind of just like I'm I'm quite ch I'm, I'm not here to look for the secrets and stuff. Obviously, I will pick up on secrets when I'm reacting. However, uh, every now and then, um, 
I will miss things because I'm not I'm not out there looking for them and I'm not fully listening all the time because um, you know I have to I have to make it con I have to transform it into content so there you go uh, I I always see this guy um, forget his name and I always see this white bunny on his on his top don't think it means anything but like Robbie has this heart like the scarred heart this guy has bunny skull doesn't really have anything um, except some cool hair this guy has a skull and this guy has a thumbs up so like I don't know if it's just random um, but yeah they, they all seem to have like things on their tops and stuff okay so something I want to look at actually uh, is this frame so in the car uh, we have on the bottom we have a mug that says number one mum interesting Again, don't know if that's any foreshadowing in particular, but like, like about Robbie's mom or, or anything. Like, this is how, this is the way she is. I, I don't know. Um, but there you go. So number one mom. Maybe it's just like a joke. Like, these guys are all really edgy and there's a number one mom mug. Um, there's die laughing. Die laughing with me or something. Uh, there's the muffin again, or the explosion as Robbie says. Zombies rule. So this was something I picked out in the episode is maybe in this episode We're gonna find out Robbie is actually a zombie because I feel like he he could he could be revealed to be a zombie And that would be really freaking funny um, Because it was foreshadowed in the first episode as well where we, we thought Norman was a zombie But he actually turned out to be gnomes uh, So if zombies ever come back, that's amazing and and just remember as well that there are reports of zombies in Dipper's book, so that's that's the reasoning behind that. I think, uh, I think there's a, like a pizza party, and I think it says Robbie in graffiti in the back. Uh, just cool attention to detail again. You guys aren't allowed to punch the roof anymore, so. Ha ha ha! Oh, that's funny. Uh, it says come back now. Um, so that's a, that's definitely from Grunkle. Uh, just like, just like exit fees, you, uh, you cannot leave this, uh, you cannot leave Gravity Falls. You have to come back to the Mystery Shack. Interesting, there's some stuff on the left as well that I didn't realize. So it says rock on. There is a skull there again. Uh, another skull here up the top as well that I don't think I pointed out. Uh, and then we've got like a ghost, a lightning bolt something else and like a clock is this foreshadowing maybe because like there's a ghost here i don't know what that bottom left thing is but the muffin is also there okay cool here we have like a, a little bit of a closer look that looks like bendy from bendy and the ink machine uh and then does that say seuss no shot that says seuss at the back has seuss been in this car Okay, cool. Uh, right. This is gonna blow someone's mind. Like uh, it says, die laughing, call me. And yes, this does say Robbie. Uh, there's also some writing on the, on the rear view Please. window. I or the rear window. H2... H2AW? What does that mean? H2AW. I don't know. All right, I know you've been waiting for me to say this. Okay, so uh, we have here we have uh, Sterly Stembleblerglis uh, as the Duchess, of course, and then let me just listen. Grampton St. Rumbus to Framble as Santa Blugget Hampter Frampshire. I completely messed that up. Cause you will never be alone. I'll be with you from dusk till dawn. I'll be with you from dusk till. I'm making one of those weird music videos, which uh, where like they put animation over it. Uh, <laughs> and they like some weird like purple and pinks uh, on top of it, and like boom. Cause you will never be alone. Baby, it's ready. No trespassing, violators will be prosecuted. Nope, dead, okay. 
right? I'm now really suspicious of a lot of these episodes because I feel like I have to go through frame by frame just in case something in the background kind of zips past. <coughs> I kind of want to, I kind of want to know if there's any other secrets like that because those are my favorite kinds of secrets, to be honest. Um, I actually imagine there could be a lot in here that I could look at. There's the pit again, uh, spiders, bubblegum machine, burgers in the back. Oh, USA week, May 2nd, 1995. Oh, so this was shot in like 1995. That's that's actually really good to know. That's good law uh, in the timeline. Cheese crust pizza declared delicious. <laughs> okay. Uh, and war or something at the bottom. Cat litter is 10.99. Great to know. Uh, we have our fresh, and we have our ice, hmm, okay. So here is a smile dip, and it specifically says do not sell, and clearly Mabel cannot read because she picks it right up and she has them uh, instantly. Das Flavor Pups? I, I always like how um, they put MT instead of TM, um, and they put it below instead of above, uh, like Mark Trade. Nyums, I guess that's the brand, Nyums. Um, I thought maybe that might be something backwards, but it's not. Um, interesting. And then we know that this dog, well, we don't know. We, we theorized that that dog is saying something and uh, people have theorized online that it says, do not trust Stan or something along those lines mustn't trust and stand or something um but i don't i don't really believe that i mean either way i don't think we should trust stan but i don't think that that is good evidence for it here's where the ice comes in and um, this is why i've been saying ice might actually represent wendy um and it's not just that either this is actually terrifying by the way um that that's gross uh this i think this show can actually get scary if it wants to you know I, I think it actually does a good job sometimes of being pretty scary uh pretty spooky like this scene as well i i actually really like this i think it's really really well done um here is the uh onwards aoshima scene oh my god that's that is a frame and a half <laughs> it's crazy animation crazy Okay, so then here's like the dead body. So it looks like they died in the convenience store originally. This is terrifying and it and it does remind me of FNAF with like arcade machines and people getting sucked into VR and AR and stuff like that. Um, okay, here we go. So we got, we got part of the book here. I actually didn't realize uh, there was a book opening in this episode. So we got alchemy on the left as per usual. I've said that so many times. Ghosts always have a reason of some kind. I guess that's where Dipper got the idea that maybe if he says he's not a teen, then they won't go after him because they, they seem to hate teens. I think there's also text. Okay. Photographic proof. Really? I don't think the ghosts look like that, but sure. Uh, and there's also a ghost in the bottom right, which is quite funny. It's like a Halloween costume. And then ectoplasm sample, Gravity Falls Town Hall. Did people die at the town hall? Interesting, interesting um, kind of like side law. Um, maybe we'll see the town hall at some point or m maybe we have and I, I just completely missed it, but interesting. Um, he becomes part of Lee's artificially colored and flavored fruit cereal. That sounds Gross, by the way. Fruit cereal? Ooh. Oh. Hang on. Artificially flavoured and coloured fruit cereal. So it doesn't even really have fruit in it. It's just flavoured and coloured like fruit. That's funny. Um, here we have the maze, which I wanted to go back to uh, when I was watching this episode, I recall now. Uh, I, I reckon, my prediction here is that there is no escape from this maze. Um, okay, never mind. I have seen one. So you go down here and then you go right here and then you follow this and that's escape. But that's not what you 
maybe this is I don't know why there's an opening here to be honest but let's let's get to freedom uh never mind you can't get to freedom look at the freedom there is no escape that's so funny <laughs> that's great that's amazing so really the route that you'll take is down here up and across and then around and then up here and then out and then you come to freedom I've played the looker you could also do start to finish but whatever <laughs> <laughs> it's really cool when a show hides little jokes like that because it means like it, it makes people look through at the small details like that um this guy has an arrow on his arm okay um no i really like it i, I think it's i think it's really cool when shows do that i love how in this in this frame you can see the hot dog guy in the back uh, and then we have Oh yeah, this is where the, the gravity actually switches. So actually, we're in Gravity Rises! <laughs> Didn't realize that they were called Mar and Par as well. Um, oh my god, this scene is too funny. Good rap music. The lyrics, they were so hateful. Homework's whack, and so are rules. Tuck it in your shirts for fools. <laughs> Homework's whack, and Sue so, so is... Oh, rules and tuck it in your shirts for fools. I freaking love it. It's so good. Um, okay. And then I think that's pretty much going to be it. There's the Lammy dance. I don't ever want to watch that again, to be honest. Um, interesting. It seems like fr after the beginning, there seems to be more text here and stuff. So there's a flower down here. This is the muffin. Uh, this is the lightning bolt, and then you look nice today is the thing that Mabel wrote, and then she looks at it and she's like, um, what kind of sick joke is this? There's the skull right here, another skull up here. I still don't really know what this is, even though we've, we've got really close up to it. Um, Seuss is in the back just behind Dipper, and then it says par right here. I don't know if that's supposed to be uh, a longer word than just par, but it would make sense if it was par because of, you know, the the ghost's name saying Pa. Um, and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, another reason I didn't really like this episode that much is because Grunkle didn't really appear in it that much. I, I really like when, like in the pool episode, the pool episode uh, from memory, everybody is involved in some way in that episode and they all have different, um, different like needs for them to be there. That they they all have different goals, I guess. It's like Dipper uh, wants to uh, be a lifeguard just so that he can get with Wendy. Uh, Seuss is climbing in to save the pool ducks. Mabel is trying to get with the merman. Stan is trying to not uh, save the chair from Gideon. Like. All of them have different roles, right? And different things that they need to do in the same place. But it is, it's just one episode. And it's really good because all of it's tied together. All of it is finished in that episode. So I think it's a really well-structured episode. This is the sort of episode right here where it's like they all go to the, the convenience store. And fantastic, there's this whole plot going on over there. But then Grunkle is just kind of on his own away from all of that. So it, it kind of felt a bit disconnected in that regard. I still quite like this episode. It's not like top ten, but I think um, I think it's I think it's pretty good. So then we have Dipper versus Manliness, which is I would say where I started to really get into this show. Uh, I think this is a brilliant episode. Uh, starts with him <laughs> starts with Grunkle saying, "Here's some crystals," and then he's like, oh, "What? Uh, what are you a cop?" Because he says, "Isn't that just shards of glass?" Uh, I have great memories of these sorts of episodes. Uh, that was weird though, that, that weird thing. Uh, this is him. <laughs> this is the guy, uh, oh, what's happening? Yeah, this is the guy trying to choose between two different t-shirts, which are pretty much exactly the same apart from the color. And he's like, this one, or this one, or this one, get him. <laughs> Uh, okay. 
Uh, and then at the, in the back, the number plate, or the license plate, sorry, of the car is called Stanley Mobile. That's cool. Uh, also, this guy has a like a, minor, a Minotaur or a Minotaur on his belt. That's quite interesting. If that's a sort of foreshadowing, I don't think it is. I think it's just the character, but uh, there you go. A greasy Steiner, we have food. I've seen this frame so many times from Game Theory FNAF videos. Uh, it's it's a really good frame, to be honest. Uh, and then here, here, Gravity Falls, 1883. This is probably where... Um, what's his name? Uh, it's probably where the, where the, where the, when the president was around, right? That, that other president that we're going to see in a few episodes' time. Uh, here is the woodpecker. So there you go. Uh, and then beavers as well, and then we have old man McGuck. There's a, there's a lot in this episode, to be honest. Uh, I love. Okay, so let's let's go through it one at a time. So we have this guy, free pizza. He's got some pizza, of course he freaking does. Old man McGuck it. He's drinking a lot. <laughs> and then we have uh, this character in the back, which we just saw in the previous episode. She's one of uh, Robbie's friends. And then we have. This is, I guess this is foreshadowing for the fact that Manly Dan is is Wendy's father. Because I, I didn't piece it together. Uh, but it, it makes sense that they're, they're Ginger, of course. Um, he's got a massive chicken uh, thigh right there. Chicken leg. Um, so there you go. There's Wendy, of course. And, and yeah, there you go. Like, she's looking at him as well. So it's like... There, there, there has been foreshadowing for these sorts of reveals. Even if they're like really small reveals, they, they, they have been foreshadowed. Um, there's the police as well. They're trying to find out the uh, speed at which he can eat the pancakes, which is quite funny. 67, 69. <laughs> what miles per hour? Are you, are you, are you serious? Uh, oh, look how happy Mabel is in this moment. <laughs> And then Grunkle, okay. She's got a spoon on her freaking nose. Okay, and then here is where we get introduced to Lazy Susan, even though we've seen her in previous episodes already. Okay. Oh, and if you don't know, guys, a Lazy Susan, I'll actually show you. I'll show you what a la Lazy Susan is. Uh, a Lazy Susan, and I know what this is because the other day I was actually thinking of getting one for my chessboard so that you can easily turn the chessboard around and then play almost against yourself. But Lazy Susan is like this device, uh, or I'd say device, but it's like a kitchen thing where you can put food on it and then you can twist it around um, so that you can share, I guess. Or like, yeah, like cheese and grapes and wine and stuff like that. Uh, it, it's a really cool thing that I, I actually feel like I might need. I might need to get a Lazy Susan. But that's that's the reference there, if you didn't know. That's why she's called Lazy Susan, which is quite funny. Yeah, and if you didn't realize as well, this is a parody of Dancing Queen by ABBA. It's, um, what is it? It's Disco Girl by Babba, I think. Disco girl, coming through, that girl is you. <laughs> Such a good song. Disco girl, coming through, that girl is you. And then in the next episode, Double Dipper, there's also a parody of... Uh, I forgot. I love how we've got a uh, manly man, man, barely passable, middle-aged woman or wimp. Uh, and of course, manly man is also uh, like manly Dan, manly man. Uh, so there you go. It's like very clear that manly Dan is a manly man. Uh, I didn't realize that this guy was here too uh, from the previous episode, but they, they seem to hang out uh, a lot. Um, also, that skull is rem very reminiscent of what we just saw in Robbie's car, or whoever's car that was. Um, cool. Another ad for Pitt on the left. I wonder... What I'm wondering is if Pitt has a bigger meaning, or if it's literally just a brand. Because um, maybe in Season 2 there'll be a reveal that, like... Bill has been hiding in pit cola this entire time or something and we've seen it in like literally every episode just like the woodpeckers Maybe there's something more to the woodpeckers, but I don't, I don't know probably not uh, I'm probably just thinking too deep into it. You know, I am a FNAF theorist. So that thing sort seems to happen quite a bit uh, <laughs> Okay, 
<laughs> this for oh my god, I did not need to see that today. Oh sorry, I'm looking for the mailman. What? Y you think I'm not a male? You think I'm not a man? <laughs> Freaking zipper. Uh, I forget the scene quite a bit. Oh yeah, uh, real man jerky. You're inadequate. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, he's trying to get some chest hair. There's Manny Dan as well, and then the Manators. I really like. I really do like this episode. It's just like somewhat forgettable. I don't know if people feel the same way. Uh, that symbol on his chest as well means man. Um, <laughs> look at that. Oh, that's a cool. That's a cool shot. This is the man cave. So many funny puns. I love shows that are witty like this. It's it's great. Yes, and I I forget. Uh, Mabel has a scrapbook, and all the photos that she's taking throughout the series, she's putting in the scrapbook. Let's have a look at some of them. So. Is this the first one? Yeah, okay, so Summer Memories. So she's got a summer-specific scrapbook. I think there's actually a short series uh, after season one which goes through Mabel's scrapbook, which we'll have a look through. So this seems to be from episode number two with uh, a fish. She's doing a, like a selfie with a fish. Uh, and then this seems to be from episode three, Headhunters. Um, cool, and then that's from episode six. Okay, cool. Uh, Seuss looks freaking hot, if you know what I mean. I'm, I'm kidding. We never found out what was in the pain hole, except, you know, pain. <laughs> but, uh, so that's interesting if there's more to that, but I don't think there is. I think it's just, it's just a joke, like, the pain hole. All that's in it is pain. What does this say? Uh, training mix? Okay. Oh yeah, this is a uh, this is a freaking montage. Cool. I did not realize he was on alligators. There's Grunkle's tattoo again. Once again, don't know if that has any deeper meaning at all. But that's I think it might be the first time we've seen that. Um, glory, honor. Okay. Oh, here's the album cover for Baba. Uh. Disco Girl. I don't think that's a reference to the album cover of ABBA at all. I think it's completely different, but there you go. Uh, I haven't looked at what Dipper has on his chest. Uh, that is a snake. That is a python. Is that a python? I don't want to look it up because I am terrified of snakes. There's also a skull with uh, flying wings or whatever. Okay. Cool. I love I love this. This scene is actually one of my favorite scenes. I think it's just really sick, man. Uh, okay. Coming through. That girl is you. Ooh 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 ooh. <laughs> That's a reference to the um, Friday night and the lights are low. Looking out for a place to go. When the dump of that music, everything is fine, you're in the mood for a dance. And when you get the chance, you are the dancing queen, young and sweet, only 17. Dancing queen, feel the beat from the tambourine, oh yeah, you can dance. You can drive, having the time of your life. Ooh, see that girl, watch that scene, dig in the Dancing Queen. There you go. That's my non-copyright edition of Dancing Queen. Uh, full disco girl song out soon. I wonder if that's a thing that they ever, like, published. I wonder if they ever did a full disco girl song. That would be funny. Uh, let's see what he has on his back. Oh, two snakes in a peach. No, I don't know what that is. It looks like a... Oh, that's an eye. That's an eye. It's like a reptile eye. Okay, cool. So it's almost giving me um, Hydra vibes. Hydra, like three-headed snake or something. Um, this is, of course, where, um, where they... 
where he asks her on a date or whatever. And then we see in the second to last episode that they did go on a date, but Grunkle ran away. So it seems like it didn't go very well. Uh, I'm just looking at the number and seeing if it's anything uh, mysterious, but I don't think it is. I think that's just my FNAF, <laughs> FNAF tendencies. <laughs> So interestingly, I don't think there was a Bill Cipher in that, or I didn't see one, but there was a Woodpecker, and we did not see book contents. Uh, yeah, that, that episode had nothing to do with the book, really. It is interesting uh, how some of them just don't really show the book at all, but it's clear that what is shown in the episodes uh, probably is going to be in the book in some way. Um, so that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Next up, we got Double Dipper, which, once again, uh, a really good episode, I think. Um, I really like these two episodes. I think they come uh, hand in hand, but really good. Unburo. I'm assuming that's horse in uh, in Spanish. Um, this is obviously pin. Oh, it's probably donkey. It's pin the uh, tail to the donkey. Uh, yes, yes. It's it's Spanish to English. Uh, Unburo is a donkey uh, or an ass. Once again, they only have pit interesting uh party at the mystery shack kids and teenagers welcome and then there's a deer and then it says free question mark i did not see that on my first uh watch through that's really funny uh because this is the episode where he charges an exit fee <laughs> which i really I, I don't know why nobody's done that before i think it's actually genius it's a great business plan um but i don't think it's i, pro, I don't think it's legal <laughs> It's probably not legal. Employee of the month is, in fact, Seuss. Um, I don't think Grunkle has any other employees other than Seuss and Wendy, right? Um, so he's kind of just singled out Seuss. Um, but there you go. It's probably to make him feel better. Uh, what is... What does it say here? Mis... Miser... Miserable? <laughs> Miserable? Miss, wait, it's Miss, Miss, uh, something, son, Miss, uh, I don't know, I don't know what that means, or what it says, maybe we'll see it in another frame, oh, funny, there's, a uh, another par here, P-A, weird, <laughs> I, I'm gonna see that everywhere now, it's just the letters P-A, that's the third time you've seen it in the, in this recording session. Um, weird. Of course, this is uh, Seuss's book on how to DJ rah, 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 right. <laughs> DJ scratch tracks forward by little big dog. <laughs> Great. Okay, here is something we're gonna need to look at. Dipper's huge list of things to do. Uh, here's the funny thing. I'm gonna turn my laptop upside down so that I can do this. It says, okay, so step one is smile. Step two, wear clean pants. Step three, compliment her looks. Step four, laugh at her jokes. Step five, be nice. Step, step six, block Robbie. Step seven, wear fitted clothing. Eight, wear a tie. Nine, uh, talk to her like a normal person. 10, describe how she smells. Ten, uh, 11, make her laugh. 12, agree with everything she says. 13, pretend you're fun. I'm pretty sure there's a joke in this as well that's like, oh, but step number 19 is to moisturize. And it's like, that, surely that should be step number one. Um, but there you go. Uh, let's see if there's any other frames here that I can see more steps on. Um, that is a, f a pretty funny plan though. I love how Mabel's sitting here just listening like, bro, what, what are you on? <laughs> bro has been possessed. This is so creepy. He's just so tall. It's so it's so bizarre. Um, is there any more here? Oh, there is. Um, so you got pretend you're fun. Uh, Fourteen, pretend you're confident. Uh, Fifteen, mop up sweat in private. Sixteen, uh, oh, uh, love burrito smell. Uh, 17, pretend to read smart books. 18, use deodorant else everywhere. There you go. 19, oh, display master 
oh, display master choir knowledge, master class knowledge, I don't know. And then 20 is do not directly, I don't know, I, I can't quite read the last two. But I, I've, I've got the point, it's just like a really bizarre out of order list that's, that is never going to work. Um, oh, here we go. Uh, 19, display monster mon knowledge. Of course, monster mon knowledge. 20, do not display monster mon knowledge. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's a funny joke. Um, I, what is monster mon? Because I actually remember um, playing kindergarten. Oh, here we go. Yeah, kindergarten. And, uh, and there were monster mon cards in kindergarten. Is it only kindergarten? Oh, weird. So maybe kindergarten, um, maybe they were inspired by Gravity Falls in some way. That is weird. Very weird. Hmm. But I'm assuming it's like a Pokemon, uh, Pokemon stand-in, right? Step nine, talk to her like a normal person. There you go. Uh, I love Mabel's outfit. I compliment Mabel so much, but she's just so adorable and so funny. It's so amazing. Uh, this is where they meet. I still don't really know their names. I think it's Grenda and Candy or something, I think. Um, and then here is uh, whatever, Northwest. Pacifica Northwest. Uh, funny how it says, uh, it says, oh my god, where is it? I missed it. It says on the desk thing at the entry, it says pay here, exit fee not included. That's quite funny. So it's almost like even if you donate to get in, you still have to pay to get out. <laughs> uh, caution, danger, peligro. What is peligro? Peligro. Is that Spanish? Hmm. It's weird are we getting a lot of Spanish. Is it not? Or it's probably like a Spanish themed party or something because they had, um, they had Le, I don't know what it was, Le Donda or something. I think La Donda is something else completely different, but they had Donkey. Um, they had Donkey and they also have Caution, but I, I don't know. It's just weird that we keep seeing Spanish pop up, uh, but there you go. And then here is Double Dicker. Oh, this is, uh, something and Sun. So this is just a brand of the, uh, of, uh, what's it, what's it called? A safe, it's a safe brand, I guess. Uh, Miser and Son or Miser and Son. Okay. Oh, don't stop believing. It's, uh, don't start unbelieving. Something like that. I don't know. Don't start unbelieving. Yeah, there you go. Beautiful, Mabel. Beautiful. It's interesting they're remaking the step plan. I didn't actually notice this. Wendy plan B. Okay. Smile, wear clean pants, compliment her looks, laugh at her jokes, be nice. Uh, block, oh, block Robbie, wear something, talk to her like a normal person. It's pretty much the same thing. But then at the bottom, we have step 19, day mo, day Mo, I don't know what that says. I think that's, um, is that gonna be the, the other dipper though? Is that gonna be the paper jam dipper? It probably is, right? <laughs> I didn't realize this as well, this is funny. Um, wow, there's a lot to look out for here. I mean, I guess this is also foreshadowing for the uh, her being part of that family because I think these characters do appear with Manly Dan so I, I guess this is also foreshadowing for the fact that for that small reveal um again it's really not a big reveal at all but there you go uh, speaking of big reveal though here is Big Dipper and we've talked about this quite a lot Big Dipper Small Dipper um of course there's the, the whole Little Dipper episode 
So it's like, what is this? What? How is how is this related? Like, what does it mean? Is it does it mean things are already written in the stars? Is it is that like this whole astrology kind of theme with numerology? Like, it's it asks a lot of questions, but I, I don't think it's actually that deep. I think it's literally just he was named Dipper because he has a birthmark that looks like the Big Dipper, uh, and and we know that the Big Dipper exists in this universe because Wendy says, ah, that's why you're named Dipper because she knows about the Big Dipper. So. It's not like a, yeah, it's it's weird. And then of course I need to mention once again that that's the second person that's melted in front of Dipper. Um, it's just weird that it's happened twice. You know, it's 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 almost like it's, uh, and, and sorry, I mean melted in front of Dipper on the roof. It seems like it's not like a coincidence. It seems like it just keeps happening. So if we ever see it, someone again melt in front of Dipper on the roof, it has to be, it has to be like a, a thing, right? So it's interesting uh, in that regard. Um, I keep thinking 616. 616 has to be something. I'm sure 616 is like an angel number of some sort. Yeah. Yeah. I knew it. I knew, I thought 616 was something. Because obviously everyone knows 666 is the devil's number, but I, th I actually think 616 is also something along uh, on that, on that um, same wavelength. So angel number meanings are related to the vibrational energy of the numbers involved, and 616 is a sequence that brings together harmony, unity, and a potential change or shifts on the horizon. It's a number that encourages you to be open to new beginnings and to learn from the lessons of the past. It is a positivity number rather than like a, a devil number. Um, although I do want to, for twin flame relationships, positive sign from your guardian angels, balance twin flame reunion. I'm just seeing the number, uh, I'm just seeing the word twin here and it's, it, it's interesting that 616 might be related to twins and soulmates and spirits and stuff like that. Um, how did the number of the bees change from 616 to 666? Oh, interesting. So it was, okay, number of the beast. Let's have a look. So we all know, as I say, number of the beast is 666. Uh, William Blake, oh, okay. Uh, in the Bible, what even is that? <laughs> it's just a load of symbols I don't understand. Um, once again, this looks like it's probably <laughs> taken straight from Gravity Falls um, with how many freaking codes there are. Uh, Bible stuff, I I think it was, I think it used to be the number of the beast. Uh, other ancient sources, like the Codex Ephraimi Rescriptus, gave the number of the beast as uh, 616, not 666. So it seems like there's like a little um, like conflict on whether it's 616 or 666 uh, in like ancient texts and stuff like that. Um, scholars to regard 616 as the original number of the beast, uh, substituted for 616 as 666, either by analogy with 888, the number of Jesus, or because it's a triangular number, the sum of the first 36 numbers. I didn't know that. I didn't know that it was a triangular number. Okay. Uh, that's... Interesting. I, I knew there was something more to 616. Um, and I, because I keep seeing 616 and it's, it, it must mean something. Obviously, when, when, here's the thing, right? It, it could just be a random number. When you're creating a show though, and you're thinking, I need to put a number on this sign. What number do I put there? You, you do find yourself going into this research to kind of put things together to, and especially like Gravity Falls and FNAF sort of things where like, you know that people are going to look into it and try to find deeper meanings with it. Like you're, you're going to put a number here that is is essential to, like, like essential with the, it's consistent with the themes of the show and foreshadowing and stuff like that. So I, I, I think it probably is to do with like the devil's number, which is quite, it's very interesting. But funnily enough, I didn't see anything in Double Dipper. No Bill Cipher, no Woodpecker, no book contents. So it seems like my theory is becoming untrue. We're not really seeing a Bill Cipher cameo in every episode. We're not seeing a Woodpecker in every episode. 
we're not seeing book contents in ep every episode, but I didn't, I didn't predict that in the first place. Um, I think it's safe to say we can probably stop doing this, but it's really cool at least to point out when these things happen because they do happen a lot. I've, I've seen, especially in later episodes, these things come up so much. Um, so we're going to point those out when they come up, but we're going to just continue with these two uh, so, uh, going forward. Um, whether there's content to the books that are essential and whether there are some extra codes within the episode. We haven't found any yet because I'm assuming there aren't any. Maybe these runes are something. Maybe these book codes are something. But I'm hoping that there's going to be some others in later episodes. We'll just have to wait and see. Let's move on to episode number eight, Irrational Treasure. Now, if there are any episodes which are going to have secret codes in them, it's going to be this one. Um, I think Irrational Treasure is very... It's just kind of slotted in there. It doesn't have any deeper... Well, not... not doesn't have deeper meaning. I'm, I'm saying it... it doesn't have a place in like the timeline I guess because it doesn't have that kind of continuity thing but it is very important so it kind of just feels like it's it was slotted in here uh, as another episode there's lazy Susan down there I didn't realize that um, anyone else that we recognize not really I think that guy's the miner up there and this guy is a photographer I love how we have ye old butcher on the left and then as we go right a little bit Ye old pizza parlor. They've literally just put ye old in front of everything. That's quite funny. Uh, what's Mabel looking at? Oh, candles. <laughs> Get them. <'em. laughs> Manly Dan. Okay. A lot of characters here that I didn't recognize on my first watch here. It's, it's kind of crazy that that's a uh, mine for gold. That's funny. Uh... And then Woodpecker. So this is where we get introduced to the fact that Woodpeckers actually have history at Gravity Falls. I won't elaborate on that if you haven't seen the episode. I'm kidding. You've seen the episode. You know exactly what the history is. All right. We've seen we've seen this actually before. Um, we've read that and we know all about this as well. Is there anything else that stands out to me? Not really. Um, I guess, again, the eye, like the Bill Cipher is watching us always. Always watching. Uh, okay, and then we go to the Gravity Falls library. Okay, and then that's this guy. <laughs> then we get, come back here. So uh, since we did this episode where we kind of looked through these frames and stuff... Um, people have told me hieroglyphics aren't necessarily letters. Um, they are more actually associated with words. With that being said, I don't think this actually does say anything. I still could be completely wrong about that. I do see a dung beetle here uh, now, though. Or, um, or what's it called? Is it a dung beetle? I think it is. Or it's like a... I forget what it's called. Like a scarab? Is it a scarab? Um... I, I haven't kept up with my uh, ancient Egyptian lore. Here we have numerology, and then we have all the star signs and stuff like that, and then it turns to alchemy. Um, we have extraction of dryness and fire of reverberation. It, it is interesting that... Um, that uh, what's, what's it called? Bill Cipher. Bill Cipher is most associated with fire. And while I'm here, I actually do want to mention that in the final episode that I did, uh, we talked a little bit, uh, or we didn't talk, but we, we I, I mentioned the blue fire, the blue flame. And I was like, what alchemist, what, what chemical, right, produces a blue flame? And I kind of off, I kind of mentioned zinc uh, because zinc has been coming up a lot. I think zinc is, well, zinc is gonna be that Z. Uh, first of all, but that, like any Z that you see in alchemy, it's probably going to be zinc. Um, and I think zinc is actually, it, it does produce a slight blue flame. It's not like a like a blue, blue flame, but it's like a, a light blue. Uh, but the thing that does produce the blue flame, most predominantly known, is copper. Which is funny because it's copper, zinc, gallium, germanium, arsenic, selenium. Uh, so it's like one before zinc. Um, but... Yeah, copper seems to be the the blue flame. I don't know if that's going to have any 
relevance at all, but it's good to keep in mind that it's copper specifically. I love that Mabel makes a hat out of the map and she accidentally finds things. It's just because she's just like trembly, you know. Um, but there you go, it's pointing directly to this place. Yeah, that that upside down looks nothing like what happens when the screen turns upside down for us. Look, watch this. Yeah, it just it morphs into that. There is no way. Look at that. That is, that's not even close. <laughs> that's really funny. Uh, but there you go. She's pointing. It's like if you saw that upside down, you would instantly know that that is an upside down angel. But oh well. We have some weird stuff in the back. We have like mine carts and portraits of miners, I assume. Uh, and then this tall tree. It's just like a workshop area, sort of, in a museum. Weird. Okay, so here, oh my gosh, I don't even think I saw this. Uh, this is United States official uh, permanent, oh no, government cover-up seal. Uh, Lincoln's hat, presidential cover-up. He just has a massive hand under his hat, funny. Uh, Benjamin Franklin, secretly a woman. It's funny. It's funny how they have so many cover-ups about the presidents. Um, the Northwest cover-up. And we've we've read all this. Uh, I don't think there's anything new on this. Obviously, we pointed out as well that there's a evil time-devouring baby from another dimension frozen in an Antarctic glacier, which we see in the next episode, which is the time-traveling episode. Um, it's also a mentioning of secret wizard powers. There's, there is an invisible wizard in Gravity Falls, or supposedly so there is. Uh, yeah. Something I want to point out is something that I, I'm seeing a common theme of. I'm seeing skulls with one golden tooth. And I'm also seeing, um, I think Old Man McGucket has a gold tooth. I need to look when, next time I see him, but I think Old Man McGucket. I might be misremembering that, but I think there's a gold tooth there. Um, here's Quentin Trembley the third Esquire. Um, so there you go, eighth and a half president. <laughs> All of this is so stupid. It's such a weird episode, but it's it's strangely relevant, you know. Uh, interesting. So there's there's a dollar bill here. Oh, Bill Cipher! Bill Cipher is literally right there. Oh, interesting. Oh, I said dollar bill by the way. It's the negative twelve dollar bill. The United States of America. Um, something funny about the number negative twelve, which I know is there's the number negative. 1 divided by 12, or 1 over 12, and that is the sum of all positive integers. Yeah, can you believe it? 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6, all the way up to infinity, is equal to minus 1 over 12. Look it up. Genuinely, I'm not lying. Um, so Bill Cipher is there. There's obviously, like, numbers here and stuff. I don't think it's going to be anything. Negative $12. That's funny. You know what? I don't trust this show. I feel like that's the code. I, yeah, at this point, right, if there's numbers, and if there's letters, and if there's secret runes and stuff like that, you've got to pick them up, and you've got to just test them at the very least. And if if not, then that's fine. Uh, but if if you find something, then there you go. Like, you would, you would really kick yourself if you didn't see it the first time and, and actually go for it. How do I do things? Literally, all I want to do is flip this image. <laughs> okay, it's fine. Uh, so we've got 0, 2, 3, 9, 5, 4, 8, 6, 0, 4. So first things first, and there's Zs on the other, on either sides of it, but I, I don't think that's anything. First of all, how many letters that is this? This is nine letters. Uh, oh, there's supposed to be a zero here as well. Let me just put that there. So zero two three nine five four eight six zero oh, four. So that's five letters maybe. Because zero two. Oh wait, no. Because thirty. There's not thirty nine letters. 
there's not 54 and there's definitely not 86. So it's not, it's not letters. Unless it is, uh... Cause my thought is if, is, if this is a secret code, why would they have zero as the first number? You know, why would, why would the first number be zero? Because like, if this was truly two, three, nine, five, they wouldn't have zero because zero doesn't correspond to a letter. Um, so it must be like zero, two, 39, 54. Let's do that. Cause it is even. So zero, two, uh, sorry, zero, two, 39, 54, 86, 04. See, there's another O, there's, there's an O, four. So what if this was B, then if this was, but then what would 39, 54, 86, would you add them? Do you add the digits? B, it, so this would be B, but we, I mean, no, four would be D. I'm literally just testing anything at this point. I think if you add the let if you add the digits, you don't get anything above 26, obviously. So that would that would potentially work. Um, so three plus nine is 12. The 12th letter of the alphabet is L. B L. This could be it. This could be it. Five plus four is nine. That's gonna be. Oh, that's gonna be an I. Eight plus six is 14. That's an N. Blind. Is there any more to that? Blind. Cause, no, because that's the same code. Blind. And then there's loads of 11s. Why is there loads of 11s? 1 plus 1 is 2. 2, 2, 2. B, 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 B. <laughs> it's like... Um, Two ones, one, two, eleven. What's the eleventh letter of the alphabet? I, J, K, 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 K. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> That's interesting, though, that we've... I don't know if that is correct. <laughs> but it has to be, right? Why is there... Why does it say blind? Why does it say... Oh. Search for the blind eye. Is there a way, is there, can we find eye in here? Blind eye. Oh, so that's, that's Z. That's interesting. It, it's reminiscent of things that we've seen in the book before. How interesting. They put blind on this bill. Oh my God, a bill, bill cipher. <laughs> Minus twelve dollar bill, minus twelve dollar bill cipher. Um, oh my gosh! So I'm I'm confused then. So I've made a connection. I think that could be right. Search for the blind eye. It's like we are searching for the blind eye. Maybe that's what we're doing in this video, and we've found blind. Um, but what does blind? What does blind eye mean? Search for the blind eye. You know what though? I'm I'm writing that in extra codes. Blind. Um, that's cool. That's really cool. If that's the right solution, I'm scared it's it's not, and I've just made that up or messed it up or something. But we we found that pretty legit. I just, 0, 2, 3, 9, 5, 4, 8, 6, 0, 4. Yeah, blind. That's, I'm, I'm in disbelief right now. I cannot believe we found that. Um, so what that tells me is that there's got to be others. Like, even these numbers down here, I still don't know what these mean. Maybe it's like the sixth letter and the first letter and the 3 plus 4 plus 5 is 12th letter. It's like sixth letter is F, first letter is A, oh, fa, uh, seven, twelve, um, 
I J K L Fal Oh no way is it gonna say Gravity Falls. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, let me go back to episode number one. Okay, I need to get to the part. I, I know I know we probably weren't gonna come back here, but somehow we've ended up back here again. Um so could it be could this be something? So 13 is 4, which is D. D A 3, 4, 5 is 12, so that's L. So D A L Dal and then Dalf. I don't think it is anything. And then 12 is gonna be 1 plus 2 is 3. No, I I I, I don't think that's relevant at all. Uh, but it would be it would be really cool if we added some numbers up like these numbers also They just have to be something three plus five is eight Which is going to be one before I which is H and three is C H C C like no um, I, it, This is it's, it's the sort of thing where we just need to keep trying Is this a cipher? Have we seen some of these symbols before? I don't think we have. I don't know. I, I think we need to just continue going forward. Otherwise, I'm going to be here forever trying to solve this. I've already been recording for two hours today. So this is already four hours of recording that we've been doing. You guys are very welcome for the uh, <laughs> the extra long analysis video. Oh my gosh. This is one of my favorite episodes. This is probably my third favorite episode, uh, which, is the, which is just after the final two episodes, I think. Uh, those two episodes are amazing, um, but this is this is also equally freaking so good. I just love I love I love how blending just appears in previous episodes. It's so cool! I was so hyped when I found that. It's it's those little secrets that I'm I'm so hyped to just see uh, and to find it. It just makes you feel so amazing when you find it. Uh, so what is this person reading? Oh, that's Wendy. What's Wendy reading? Pit Cola again, Indie Fuzz. Okay, so might, she might be into indie music. I said maybe, you're gonna be the one that saves me. I, get, I, I bet that's what Robbie does. Nah, Robbie just does, Wendy, Wendy. <laughs> um, here we have Mabel being a witch. And then <laughs> in the knife and fork. We've already talked all about blending. I, I, oh, blending. Sorry. I think um, most of the secrets in this episode are going to be from you know blending's clothing and stuff. Uh, is that like now? I'm really suspicious. Is that is twenty schmeventy twelve? Is that a uh, a secret code of some sort? I don't think so because seven tilde schmeven is is not a it's not a number. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think, I don't think, they, they seem to play cards a lot, by the way. I, I have, I've just noticed that. But I guess there's not much else to do in the middle of the forest. Uh, man, this scene is so good. Uh, and then they come back. I, it's just w w why it's one of my favorite episodes. I think it's just really well put together. Uh, she takes a lot of photos here. For a scrapbook, probably. So I'm assuming that will come up in the scrapbook thing. So this math. So I never actually got anywhere with this math. I think we did it a little bit in, in an episode. Uh, but it is quite complex mathematics, to be honest. It's like I, I went to university to do maths and I understand a little, uh, quite a little bit of this. Like I understand where it's coming from and what it's relating to. I just don't know if it's solvable. I think it's just like some cool maths that they put in. Just... Uh, just to throw in some epic maths in there. Uh, so I don't think it's actually anything suspicious or anything. Uh, okay, so this episode, I, I actually don't think there's anything else that we haven't seen yet. I could be completely wrong, of course. There's probably so many codes that I've missed out on in this video already, but there we go. Oh, interestingly, we... <laughs> We see the dinosaur. I think that's the dinosaur that's in the amber in that episode, right? Maybe. Uh, this is the baby that we were talking about. 
Uh, this is where they go back to the Gobblewonka Lake and they drop the calculator, so then Blendon has to go back. Same thing here, eighth wonder of the world. Uh, same thing here. And then, yeah, we've, we've talked about Bla uh, Blendon being in those locations. And then I've also talked a little bit about this weird scene, which is really, really out of place. Um, it sure looks like Stan and it sure looks like the shack, but I'm not convinced. You know what, maybe. What if those glasses, what if those glasses were the glasses in, in the opening shot? And this is a separate character. This is a red herring. This is not Bill. Or not, uh, not Bill, um, Stan. What if it's not Stan? I could see that plot twist, but I don't think they're going to do it because I don't really see the point in that. But that scene is very out of place, you know. That's the cutest photo ever. I want that on my wall. <laughs> uh, oh, no, the saddest scene in the series. Oh, my gosh, I cannot believe I didn't cry. I, I, I didn't, can't believe I didn't cry at this when I first saw it because, Jesus Christ, it's sad. Oh my gosh, that one timeline where frickin' Mabel just keeps banging her head against that tree. Jesus. Uh, we have Lolf here. And we have Dundgren. Dundgren. There you go. Time Variance Authority, for sure. And then there's the laser, and there you go. Yeah, I think I know the ins and outs of this episode pretty well. I don't think there's anything else. Uh, again, all of you in the comments are going to tell me I was completely wrong, but... There you go. Fight Fighters is next, halfway through the series. And there's going to be a lot to analyze in this. So let's take it a little bit slow. So this arcade uh, is, of course, what we saw in Blendon's uh, clothing uh, that one time. We have Bill Cipher on the right immediately. Like, literally just Bill Cipher out there, uh, right there. Uh, which is a really cool Easter egg. We also have what looks like a Mario ripoff here, where it's uh, it looks like Wario to be honest, and he's got a baseball bat. And oh no, it's like it's a baseball. It's baseball, I think. It's a baseball. He's got like a glove and he's got a bat. And then instead of a question mark block, a golden question mark block, we have a silver exclamation mark block, which is quite funny, because you know we've seen question marks everywhere in this series because of the mystery shack. Uh, let's continue forward with this. Uh, Nerd Punch Z. Frog Time. That's a uh, a Frogger reference, I guess. Or um, oh, what? What's that game called on on mobile? Which is like the chicken, the chicken crossing the road, Crossy Road, Crossy Road. It's uh, Frogger or Crossy Road. Uh, ghost Maze. Once again, a, mo a mention of ghosts. I'm seeing these ghost symbols a lot. Uh, but this is obviously Pac-Man, but it's triangles because, you know, Bill Cipher. Hoedown Hero. Uh, fine. Uh, this is funny. Uh, that looks like Hand Unit. Uh, it's funny how <laughs> Gronkle is so excited when he wins. Look at that face. <laughs> He's so excited. And then the game just restarts. It's just, it's, it's, a, it's a play on the fact that uh, he's been scamming people out of their money. He's been scamming money out of people. Uh, by using the bag technique, like, Carmen, put in this this money in this bag and uh, it will magically disappear. And then he gets this happen to him in the arcade. It's so funny. It's just such a funny callback. Uh, this is obviously Fight Fighters, which is, it, it looks really cool. It's, it's not the type of game I would play, but it looks a really cool game. It looks great graphics. Yeah. Robbie V and the Tombstones, you're dead. Of course, that comes up later when Dipper, I guess, like, he sees it and he's like, you're dead. And he's like, yeah, I am. Um, uh, funnily enough, we have Nyums has come back, which is the uh, the brand of these, these stuff. Uh, these stuff, that is not correct grammar. Uh, chip Packers, the chip flavored crackers. Interesting. Uh, does, can't really read that at the bottom, but looks like Mabel is about to eat all of them. So have fun, Mabel. And then here we go. Here's our interaction with Robbie. Laser Wizard in the back. Once again, another wizard mention. It seems that we're just getting a lot of like semantic fields, like uh, like just just themes throughout, right? 
I like we got the themes of wizards and triangles and eyes and stuff like that. It's just like wow. It's just a lot of imagery and a lot of a lot of common themes throughout the series that if you if you don't look close enough you don't pick up on, you know. I think I pointed that this out in the episode, but we have Nought, the game based on the movie, based on the game. And then I said Five Nights at Freddy's. Uh pizza time right here. I'm surprised the pizza man is not not at that much that at that machine right now. We have the claw, which is a Toy Story reference. Um, snack bar as well. Okay, fine. So here we have to unleash ultimate power. Left, left, PP. Right, left, down. KK up. P times three K. That's obviously cheat code. Uh, which sort of relates to Konami cheat code that we saw in the intro screen, uh, but it's not the same code, that's something to mention. But I guess it also ju it, it just ties in because Konami cheat code um, is like the most famous cheat code that exists. Uh, here we go. This is map of the world according to this game. Uh, it's pretty accurate, it's pretty accurate. <laughs> I love this, Barrels and Crates Incorporated, and then we get a uh, Donkey Kong parody, I guess, where he's throwing barrels and then he's going down the ladders. Usually you would go up the ladders, of course, to towards Donkey Kong, but here he's running away from the video game character. Just really like this episode for quite a, quite a few reasons, and one of them is the fact that it's video game themed. I think a lot of, I think a lot of kids uh, really fell in love with this episode, right? Because it's, it's probably, right up their street. Uh, it's probably like the exact target audience they wanted. Um, this is a cool reference as well where it's got the arrow saying go. Don't actually know where that's from. Is that Street Fighter? I have no idea. I haven't played any of those sorts of games. Uh, uh, I can confidently say it is not Street Fighter I'm talking about. Okay, so here we have the Super Power Ninja Turtle. Wait, Never mind, <laughs> not Ninja Turtle. Super Power Ninja Turbo Neo Ultra Hyper Mega Multi Alpha Mega Extra Uper Prefix Combo. Freaking man, great. That's great. And then just black screen. Oh, it's a muffin! <laughs> it's a muffin. Although it looks like it's in the shape of a fist. That's cool. Uh, it's a muffin, cool. Animators did such a great job at... Um, at animating muffins. What is that? What does that mean? I of course would love to reverse image search that, but I'm sure that's not actually gonna help. Uh, I'm sure it's some Japanese letter though. Actually, let's look up some Japanese alphabet. I, I think it's probably Japanese or Chinese or Korean maybe. Fun fact, I did like a, <laughs> did like two weeks of Korean on Duolingo once and I've forgotten it all because obviously it's it's a lot more complicated languages learning languages is a lot more complicated when you don't have the the letters that you already know like you're using completely different symbols and letters it's a lot harder uh, I'm not seeing anything that looks like what we had I think maybe I'm just looking too deep into it again that P is quite similar although this is English alphabet in Japanese style, so of course it looks similar to a P. Don't really think there's anything in that episode apart from like peace uh, on the graffitied on the back of the wall, and then of course uh, Wendy's family in the back. But yeah, I, like I don't think it it's really got anything else. This is really cool, by the way. Although here we have Mystery Shack right next to Gideon's thing, right next to a graveyard next to the town. I mean, this is cool because it's telling us where everything is, right? Uh, this is also the opening shot of episodes 19 and 20 and also where Gideon's big machine falls to the ground, right? And then this is Butt Island over here, as you can see. Um, yeah, this, this is cool. This is like a, a cool map. I just don't think that these two are that close. Uh, but that's quite cool. An amazing rendition of the intro I'm music. I have shorts and determination. I have shorts and determination, I think. It's a me, a Mabel. It's a me, a Mabel. <laughs> Just like Mario. I'm slower, but I 
jump higher. I jump higher. Pick me or whatever. Pick me or whatever, and then Suze comes in as Pac-Man. Okay, great. We've got Little Dipper next, and we've talked a little bit about the implications of Big Dipper versus Little Dipper and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, we've we I think we've talked a little bit in this episode about some of the stuff that we've seen, but I'm just gonna go through it a little bit again. So Stan Pines, um, how many, however many dollars or whatever. Uh, date today. Oh, here we go. Here we go. So this is how Stan knew it was fake. I've always wondered, like, how did Stan know that this wasn't wasn't real? But address is Winning House McBean Parkway. One, two, three, four, five. Winning House MT. Date today. Stan Pines. Ten million dollars. Ten million dollars. Winner signature. Uh, and then obviously it's Gideon. Uh, suck a lemon, little man. <laughs> Love how he instantly knew it was him. We've tried to analyze this chess game as well, but uh, we had no luck because of course it is a, I think it was a 10 by eight board. And of course chess is played on an eight by eight board. Uh, here we have, okay, so we're looking in the book for the first time in a while. Um, what do we have here? Let's see. Come on, show me the show me the inside. Show me the contents. Oh, wait! I cannot believe it showed us that so early on, and I just didn't clock it. Or I was, obviously I didn't clock it because I didn't know what it was. But there you go. Uh, we have some binary. Bottom left. And we have some sort of thing again. So let's let's take a screenshot of this at least. How much do you want to bet the binary doesn't actually say anything? Let's 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 have a look at this this binary. I think if it's going if it's going to be any letters, it's going to be two letters max. <laughs> uh, but it's let, we'll have a look just in case. Zero one zero zero one zero one zero 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 one one zero one zero. So if you don't know how binary works, I think it's just like some some numeric values of, of binary code um, are attributed to certain uh, letters. So, and, it, and it's usually eight numbers long. So if there's 16 letters here, it's gonna be two letters. Uh, sorry, 16 numbers, it's gonna be two letters. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't think this is going to turn in, into anything, but let's test it anyway. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't think it's going to be anything, um, unless it's ASCII, <laughs> imagine. Just like a big picture of like a Fortnite dance. Uh, what about binary to decimal, I think maybe? Okay, so it's, it's 1897-0. Uh, 1987. Oh my gosh, it's appearing everywhere. Uh, I don't think that's going to mean anything, really. Um, yeah, I, I don't think so. But uh, it was it was worth a try. So we turn to the page and we see crystals. Uh, height altering. There you go. Legends tell of the height altering phenomenon deep within the forest or whatever. And then we have like a diagram here, A, B, and C, which is laid out here. Ordinary crystal. So C is an ordinary crystal. B is a, oh my gosh, I don't know what that, that says. A is a something. I'm assuming one of them is gonna be um, growing properties and the other is going to say shrinking properties. I think that's what it says. Oh, I think it says, shrinking properties or something and then enlarging properties something along those lines uh this skull is found near the crystals interesting more alchemy at the top okay cool i'm actually being reminded of what happens in this episode and i really like it i think it's a really good episode um gum gummy koalas is a thing apparently in this universe i would love a gummy koala right now sounds delightful 
It is interesting that Sue says, one day. <laughs> no, that was, sorry, that was Grunkle Stan. Uh, one day. What, one, how, how does he speak? Um. One day. One day. What? What? One day. I can't do an impression. I can't do an impression of any of these characters, to be honest. Um, I'll see if I can do a Grunkle Stan impression in a second. Uh, Pit Cola is back. Again, it appears in every episode. It's it's strange. What's in his mirror? There's some books, I guess. Uh, apple juice, I think. Okay, I love his floor. I actually like the look of the room, even though it's, it looks quite an evil room. Here we have a uh, 999, which obviously upside down is 666. I don't know if that's relevant at all. There you go. There's uh, Gideon with Lazy Susan. Uh, what's uh, what's up with this bus? Is, does, is the beaver on it at all? I don't think it is. No. Okay. Uh, but there's Dipper and Mabel on the balloon, which didn't look like a balloon at first, but sure. Gravity Falls Elementary School Gideon Gleeful ID number 618. Two off of 666. Just saying. <laughs> Kidding. This is one of the funnier scenes. I just love how he's just like in every mirror and he's like, ha ha ha. Like, it, it's like he thinks every battle is a joke. It's so freaking funny. Grunkle Stan is, is actually smarter than, than everybody thought. $500 each and you're paying for all of them. $500 each and you're paying for all of them. <laughs> That's way too dank. Way too dank. Um, I just can't, I can't get the voices. You don't want to hear my Gideon impression either. I'm sure it's, sure it's horrible. I'm not doing an impression of that. Jesus Christ, look at this kid. <laughs> uh, so there we go. I think that's the end of that one. Uh, I do want to re-listen to the end of this. I guess we'll have to give the prize to our runner-up winner. Fiddleford H. McGucket. Wait, what's his name? Giddleford. Gucket. Oh, hang on. Ah! Fiddleford H. McGucket. Fiddleford H. McGucket. That's his full name. Okay, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Fiddleford. Fiddleford and Stanford. That's the thing. Fiddleford. Uh, winning. Wait, it's literally the same check? Okay. Weird. But this time it's real? That is weird. And at the end, he's like, cross these guys off the, off the list. Uh, across this town of the list. I love that. Okay, so I think at the moment in these episodes, we're finding a lot of like Easter eggs almost and callbacks, which is really fun. Uh, don't get me wrong. I think we. I think after these last few episodes, like we, we've got like another six or seven episodes left until we get to obviously the last two, which is going to be huge. I think these are all actually going to be the same. I think there's going to be loads of Easter eggs and stuff. It does scare me that we did find one secret code in one random episode, but I'm thinking maybe it's just because it's a pretty important episode. It's the Irrational Treasure episode, which kind of tells us about like alchemy and like stuff about the book and like Gravity Falls as a whole. Um, so I'm, I'm guessing these aren't going to be that important, but just wait until we get to Dreamscapers and Gideon Rises because it's going to be so much to break down there. Anyway, I'm going to have a break from this video. I've been recording for two and a half hours now, so I will see you in a second. I suggest you also take a break if you've been watching this whole way through in one session. <laughs> All right, I will see you in a bit. All right, guys, I am back. I, uh, <laughs> I have fallen ill in the time since I last recorded and... This is a this is a video that has currently been a weeks in the making or a week in the making, and uh, and yeah, I've fallen ill halfway through. But but we we're still going to do this. This is the one thing that's going to cheer me up right now is watching some more Gravity. Well, not watching some more Gravity Falls, but decoding more of Gravity Falls. And hopefully, we're going to get to the final few episodes pretty soon. But first, we need to move on to Summerween. Okay, so I, I can't imagine what's really going to be in this episode apart from stuff in the store, in the Halloween store. So let's have a look. Uh, Summerween Superstore. Uh, there's an eye right there. Cool. And there's a pentagram there as well. That's interesting. 
Um, we just keep seeing eyes and pentagrams. It seems to be all around. And pentagram seems to be more of like a, like a Gideon thing. But I guess it's, it's like just, just overall, it's, it's like a, a, uh, what's it called? It's, it's overall like a summoning ritual kind of thing. And we know that Gideon does a summoning ritual in the second to last episode when he summons Bill Cipher, essentially. So I think that's probably where it's related. Here we've got a calendar showing what day uh, Summer Ween is on. Uh, so we have first, second, and then this is going to be the 9th. That's going to be the 16th, and that's going to be the 23rd. So this is the 22nd of June. And I want to see, um, you will see that on this calendar, 2012 is the year that we pointed out um, that one time, that uh, we believe this happens in 2012, right? And I think that's when this also came out. Anyway... Uh, June 22nd is a Friday, and as you can see on this calendar, it is only the fifth one across. But, we are in America, and Americans do like to use the system Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So this is accurate if it was, um, if it was, wait a second. Oh yeah, 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 this is accurate if it was, uh, 2012. Oh, funny, we've got masks. Um, is that Larry King? It's probably not because we had the wax Larry King before, but it didn't look exactly like that. Those are the skulls that Seuss keeps pressing. Oh my gosh, Seuss. <laughs> Seuss is such a character, to be honest. He's, he's just such, he is such a character in a show about characters. I really love the detail that it's, uh, it's Jacko Melons, not Jacko, uh, Jacko Lanterns, which doesn't make sense to call them that because it's not called Jacko Pumpkins, but whatever. But it's Jacko Lantern Melons rather than Pumpkins. I really like that detail. Um, cause like summer versus fall or whatever. Um, fake blood, some gravestones in the back, Samoween, candy. We got some Stan bucks, 50, $50. It's money, Grunkle Stan. Oh my gosh. Oh, I love how this looks. It's so beautiful. It really is. Um, okay. So now we're going trick or treating. I don't know what that says at the bottom, but we got a trick or treating book. Or is that track or treating? Track or treating? I don't know what that says. Um, but there we go. And we got Seuss in the background eating some candy. Ah, uh, here we go. It does say trick or treating. And it says trick or treating memories. Three years old. So this is different maybe when they were three. Cutie cats. Oh, that's cute. Uh, third grade, salt and pepper. <laughs> Sixth grade, zombies. Oh my gosh. They they have some great costumes, they do. I, I really love it when people do like joint costumes. I think it just brings everyone together more. It's really cute. Um, here we have some more, uh, more candy names. Let's have a look. We have sand pop. Okay, it's a lollipop. A squishy chair, gummy chair. That's actually a cool idea. Mr. Adequate Bar, uh, chocolate flavored candy. <laughs> and then it goes into here, which we, we've already seen because of the homework, the candy code. But we have gelatin products, sand pop. Uh, what is the one in the back? O I O R C A. Oi Orca. <laughs> Oi Orca? Like an Orca whale? Maybe? I don't know. Uh, and then count discount as well. That's a that's a funny one. We got Tambury Summerween party. Tambury. Don't know. We've never heard of Tambury before. I don't think unless it's one of the friends that I didn't catch the name of. Uh, not S and P approved. Salt and pepper. <laughs> I don't know what S and P means. Uh, no photos better end up online. Right. So it's one of those sorts of parties, huh? Okay. <laughs> Uh, oh, Mabel's costume is so cute. And Grunkle's is just amazing in every way. It fits him so well. Oh, and, uh, and of course, uh, the pig. I forgot his name. Waddles. Waddles! Okay, so here's the Summerween monster. Probably the best part of this episode. He's so cool. I love the little face and the massive hat. It's, it's really, it's really horrible. <laughs> this sort of, uh... This, this episode sort of reminds me of, like, a FNAF story. Like, this could be a Fazbear Fright story, 100%. The, 
the summer ween monster. There's the jump scare. I have been got... When I was younger, when I was like these kids' age, my granddad got me with one of the, these jump scares. And that was the first time I've ever seen a jump scare. And my experience of it was genuinely... It scarred me for life. Uh, and now I like FNAF. <laughs> so I don't know how that happened. But but you know what I mean, right? Summer ween, the monster and just like the premise of this, it, it could definitely... It could definitely... Uh, it could definitely be a Fazbear Fright story, for sure. Um, it looks like Toby Determined has this mask, and I want to check if this is the same mask that we see in episode one, as I've been saying. Once again, I said I would never come back through these episodes, but sometimes you just gotta... You just gotta come back. <laughs> We're gonna go back to episode one so many times. Where's the part where Mabel's rolling in grass? Ah, here it is. So is that the same mask? I mean, it, it's pretty similar, but I'm gonna have to say no. We have a different nose, we have different horns, uh, teeth are very different, and we have like these flaps as well. So it, it doesn't seem to be the same mask. Um, I mean, I'm not disappointed by that. <laughs> like it makes sense for it to be different masks, but and, like I don't even know what that'd be a reference to, but there you go. Oh my God. So creepy. Oh no. Oh Jesus. I did not want to see that. That was horrifying. Those few frames. This is one of the scariest episodes, to be honest. I mean, it makes sense. It's summer ween, but Jesus. Uh do we have anything here? Not really. I'm not seeing any uh obviously like book contents or anything like that. So I think this is a pretty like standard. It's like a filler episode almost. I don't want to call it filler because that has negative implications. This is a really good episode, don't get me wrong. Oh, a bit of Cypher on the shield. That's cool. Uh, this is a really good episode, don't get me wrong. But there are sort of a few episodes uh, around the middle where it just kind of gets a little bit like, I don't know, a little bit tiring. I think I saw a comment on one of my videos actually that... Um, Alex Hirsch actually got really exhausted from making the first season of the show. And because of that, they almost didn't make a season two. But I'm, I'm really glad that they did. Because uh, it means more content for me. <laughs> How weird. There's like a, a candy heart here that Suze has. Uh, but yeah, as, as, I, as I say, it's, it doesn't seem to be a lorry episode at all and I have a feeling the next few are going to be the same but I'm still going to go through them to see if there's anything I missed um what is that uh that's not horrifying blotch oh this is what we saw before blotch what does blotch mean I looked it up and it, it doesn't seem to mean anything uh I just don't know why they came up with that name this is my favorite uh <laughs> outro uh working nine till five i hate mondays i love it it's so cute <laughs> this is the thing like it's it, this uh this show is really cultured i i like the the meme format here um what do we have here monthly report 41 plus 18 is 61 no it's not it's, it is absolutely not absolutely not 61, it's 59. Uh, and then we've got another 6%, which is going to be 60. Oh my gosh, my math. Oh my gosh, I've lost my math. As I've become sick, I've lost my ability to do math. Okay, 16 plus 17 is 33, plus 6 is 39, plus 18 is 58, I think. And then 41 is going to be... I must have done something wrong. 41, oh my gosh. Just, where's my calculator? I'm gonna watch this back through the edit and I'm going to really sigh at myself, but I do have an excuse. I just, I haven't done any thinking for like two days. So there you go. So it actually totals 98%. Uh, and if it, if it totaled 99, I'd be okay with it because um, obviously you can have rounding and stuff. But the fact that this is 98%, uh, I mean, I guess it could still be rounding. Like, you could have 15.5, 16.5, 5.5, 17.5, 41. And that would... I think that would... 
No, because then, oh, it doesn't matter. I, I don't care for math. I hate math. <laughs> I don't, I don't. Um, okay. Mavis, plead hold my calls, thanks. <laughs> I can has promotion. And then the next one is like, no promotion. There you go. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love no promotion. Casual Friday. <laughs> He's so stylish, pigged out. Uh, Waddles might be my favorite character. <laughs> it might be my favorite character. All right, so that is Summerween. Moving on now to Boss Mabel. Uh, here is the kind of foreshadowing of the cash wheel. I didn't even pick up on this during the episode, but they introduced the show. Uh, Chip Ackers, or Chip, Chip Ackers, that's a, a thing that we've seen before. The chip flavored crackers. Yeah, and, and Mabel, Mabel loves eating the chip ackers. And so does uh, Waddles, apparently. Didn't see that before. What do we have here? Cash cannon and cash shower. Okay. It is a Wheel of Fortune parody. It just seems like it's it has more stuff to it. Uh, all right, what do we have here? Uh, okay. Indie Fuzz, again, singing salmon <laughs> in the back, what? We have uh, like snow globes of the Mystery Shack, that's really cool, that's really cool. Maybe that ties in with the uh, the snowy Mystery Shack um, that we saw with the young Grunkle Stan. Also see some runes here, which I'm sure at this point the runes don't actually mean anything, they were just put there by the animators because, you know, just to fill up the place, but we're still going to take pictures of them just be just in case, you know? Anytime I see a rune, I've got to take a snapshot of it. <laughs> I didn't notice that the Mystery Shack actually has an eye in its, in its like, logo. Uh, oh, it, although this is, like, a different place, isn't it? This is, like, the museum house or whatever. Museum Shack, I guess. I think it's separate. Uh, that is... That is awful. Horse riding a horse? So wrong, it's unnatural. <laughs> That's awful. There's our wolf boy. Okay, I really like this episode, actually. I, I I like it for a few different reasons. I think the ending is really funny. And I think that um, it has a really good plot line. Succeeding in management, 1983. Okay. I, I guess uh, that means <laughs> yes, this has to take place after 1983, but we've already theorized that. Uh, we have satisfied, every day, loving life, very much, every day, satisfied, selves. Okay. <laughs> Boss Mabel is something I I didn't think we'd ever see, but it's it's so random, you know. It's so out of nowhere. Um, here we have the book. Okay, are we going to see inside the book? Because, you know, he, he goes out to get uh, one of the monsters. So I wonder if we ever see inside the book in this episode. What a random episode. A lot of these episodes are just really random, but that's, I guess, I guess that's this show, right? I wonder if season two is going to be just as random each episode, or if it's actually going to have more of like a continuity. Um, I mean, I guess it could still be both. Uh... Luke Raw Magnus? I don't know what that means. Shut your yaps. Uh, oh, Grunkle... Uh, Grunkle guesses this, shut your yaps. And then I think later in the episode, Mabel actually says, shut your map, shut your yaps. So it kind of shows that they are almost one and the same when they're the boss. Uh, six Pacolope. Oh, so like a cantaloupe? No, a cantaloupe is a fruit, isn't it? Or a vegetable? I don't know. Again, my brain is smush right now. Absolute smush. This is, in fact, the bat creature that we keep seeing in the intro, I think. Uh, it looks very similar. So I'm, I'm willing to bet on it. <sighs> I love gravity falls. Look at how many runes there are that are never going to come into play ever. I think it's pretty pointless that I'm still doing this. Oh my gosh, I can't with this laptop. 
He's got a really cool design, actually. I never, I never uh, looked closer at it, but it's, it's, it's looking really cool for your five minute break. <laughs> that's one of the, a, a, that's a really good joke. Oh, there's a wolf here. I didn't, I didn't realize that. Um, and Sousa just in the middle of nowhere <laughs> with nothing on except a massive question mark suit. Uh, so does he ever actually, we, we look into the book, but I don't think we get to look in the, wait. The salmon actually sings. He's gotta leave eventually. I'm the singing salmon spending all day jamming. I'm the singing salmon spending all day jamming. <laughs> I didn't realize that was actually a thing. I can't. I couldn't remember seeing that. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about this. You you look into his eyes and you see his uh, you see your darkest nightmares or whatever, and then he looks into himself. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, I, I love uh. I love that he, they have one dollar profit, and he loses all of his money that he earned. Um, <laughs> and he loses all of it because he couldn't guess the word please. I think it was. It's a magic word beginning with P. Six letters. Yeah, this this was a, a really good episode. I liked it at least. Um, but unfortunately, we don't see anything in that episode, really. Uh, again, I think a lot of these episodes near the end are kind of where uh, the the law aspects kind of run out a little bit. Well, not run out, but we're, we're not going to see as much book contents and stuff. And then we're going to get to episode 19, and that's going to take me like an hour to get through. So stay tuned. But for now, I'm actually done today. <laughs> I really need to get some rest. So I will see you probably tomorrow. Bye. Okay, it is tomorrow and I am feeling a little bit more awake today, so hopefully I'm going to actually be able to do math and stuff. Anyway, let's move on to the next episode, The Bottomless Pit. Okie dokie, this episode was a little bit um, kind of random. But at the same time, it did also reappear in the Dreamscaperers episode, uh, as did a lot of things, but... Uh, it. There was a part where, like, Grunkle Stan was like, Oh, nothing's more bottomless than the bottomless pit. Uh, let's have a look. Grunkle Stan, why are we- What I would find really weird is if that- the, the trap door that went in the bottomless pit actually does appear in this episode. That would be- that would be a really cool easter egg. I'm gonna watch through just in case that does actually happen and I just completely missed it on a first watch. Goodbye, creepy love letters from little Gideon. <laughs> die! Die! <laughs> Mabel says that a lot. Ma <laughs> Whenever there's something to do with Gideon, she always like, die, die! Or I don't know if it's Gideon or it's just like the um, like bad forces of nature, but there you go. <laughs> it's so stupid. The plot of this. <laughs> It's so funny. Uh, okay. So this episode, if anything, is actually going to have less in it to look for. But I, I guess in all the stories, there could be a lot. Um, what does that say? Tape? Tape man? Once again, we got some pit cans. Yeah, it does say tape man. Okay. So I guess that's just a brand of cassette tapes. Um, I'm not seeing anything in this. Uh, Seuss's really great pinball story. Is that a good title? Do they just have to be puns or whatever? That's funny. Um, it's called Tumbleweed Terror, I think. Uh, high scores GG White. No, I'm kidding. Sal and Gaff. We don't know who those are. And Pooh, of course. Great. Funny name. Haha. -ha. This does look like a really fun uh, pinball machine. I, I don't think I've ever really played in a, with a pinball machine before, but they always... I always really love the designs of them. I think they're such a cool idea. Okay, a number that I, I'm noticing pops up quite a lot for some reason is 618. I, I could be completely wrong in saying that, but I swear I've seen 618 so many times. We've seen 616, which we know is like the old devil's number as we talked about before. But 618 also appears a lot. I think it's one of the house numbers in the series. I've seen it up here. I think I've seen it in a few other places. Also, gold tooth, again. I don't know what it is about um, like skulls having gold teeth, but I, I, I do need to check still if, um, if old man McGucket, I do need to check if he has a gold tooth, because I think he does. 
that's just what I'm seeing. I'm just seeing a lot of weird um, themes and connections and things that come up more than once in in this series. Uh, again, like the woodpecker, like Bill Cipher cameos. Um, what do we have? Quarter dollar, United States of America, in God we trust. That looks pretty standard. I don't know what a, a US coin has on it or says on it, but that's probably, that sounds about right. Um, Ballway Games, Redmont, Washington. Does that exist? Okay, it doesn't exist, but I, I, it's probably because of the MT rather than TM uh, trademark. So it, yeah, if it was TM, it would it probably it would probably be a thing. But I think they're just like doing puns and wordplay and stuff, um, which is why it doesn't exist. It's it's a MT, not a TM. Uh, warning: turning off power will erase all data. Cool. So yeah, there goes all of his. That's a really cool detail. That um, I, again, like just attention to detail in this is really good. An ad for Pit Cola that it seems to pop up so much. Maybe I should have put Bill Cipher cameos, Woodpecker cameos, Pit cameos because I think Pit has appeared in every episode at this point. It just seems to be a, like a soda flavor. I, I don't think it's a soda brand. I, I don't think it's actually uh, anything big. But there you go. This is disgusting, by the way. Truth ache. Again, gold teeth. Right? Right? Gold teeth? Also, while I think about it, wasn't Seuss's aim of this game to just get the high score? Why didn't he just reset the machine and then play the game and he would automatically have the high score? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, El Diablo. Ooh. El Diablo is a name shared by several characters appearing in media published by DC Comics, Lazarus Lane, Raphael Sandoval, and Chateau Santana. El Diablo? Is that like a... Yeah, I thought it was like a devil thing, right? El Diablo meaning, maybe? Uh, the devil. Okay, it's Spanish for the devil. I didn't know that. El Diablo? Okay. So... On a... <laughs> In la tradición judio-syncrática, <laughs> judio-syncrática, I don't know what that means. Judio-Christiana, that's probably Christian, uh, it's Christianity. Principe de los Angeles. So this car is called the devil in Spanish. Again, another Spanish thing that's come up. Why so much Spanish? Like seriously, why so much Spanish? Stan is sick and needs a bear. Dr. Medicine, and then the police come out later and they're like, we looked up Dr. Medicine, he doesn't exist. Yeah, duh. Uh, oh, here we go. I forgot that we look in the book in this episode, actually. So it, maybe this episode is more relevant than I thought. I didn't enjoy it as much when I watched it initially, but looking back, it is, it's, it's an all right episode. Truth telling teeth. Again, we have this weird stamp, right? Um, I could not label this if I tried. Uh, we have, um, oh my gosh, the different, the different teeth, um, canine, no, not, not canines, wait, no, it is called canines, it is called canines, but it, it's not the ones that, uh, are, we're pointing to, I think it's, like, these ones, it's actually, I think these ones, you can see I kind of have, like, fangs, I think those are, those are canines, um, because they're, they're, like, wolf-like, like a werewolf has fangs. Does a werewolf have fangs? I don't know. But like fangs, like canines. Yeah, you know what I mean. Ah, so molars and incisors. Or incisors, incisors, I guess. And then gums, I guess. I don't know why we care. We don't care. What is this? Oh, this is just telling you where to find the, the truth telling teeth, I guess. Uh, okay, this is cool. I, I hate teeth imagery. Teeth freak me out, man. Ah, oh, they're so weird. P the Plot Twist by William Raven Doan? Huh. Actually, The Truth Telling Teeth it has some of my favorite, um, has some of my favorite, uh, like, jokes in it, I think. Uh, have a look at this, guys. The Gravity Falls gossip, Gossiper. 
Oh, it's gossiper, not g gossipier. Never mind. I thought it was gossipier. <laughs> I thought it was like a French word for news reporter or whatever. Look at look at what it says though. The Gravity Falls gossiper, the newspaper. UFO was a sham. So we're getting like loads of UFO lore throughout these episodes, even though we've never even seen a UFO in these episodes yet. It's crazy. We've seen so many UFOs. Anonymous Dep Depty comes clean. 50% off. Uh, that's interesting. We just keep seeing UFOs. What is that about? Uh, I have committed tax fraud. Here's the 2012, right? This is where uh, where we got 2012 from. Pretty sure it's 2020, uh, 2012 because of uh, because it's asking for income tax or whatever. And I don't think any time has passed. It must be some kind of wormhole. Yeah, dude. That sounds sciencey enough to be true. But but that's it. Wormhole, huh? Wormhole. A wormhole. Um, that would imply that we've traveled from one universe to another. Uh, a wormhole is like the, the cross between uh, a black hole and a white hole, and it's a way to essentially travel through space and time. Um, I don't know. I, I would assume it would be a wormhole. But well, that means we've entered a, a parallel universe, which is quite interesting to think about if the show is going to cover those sorts of topics. If there are different, like if there's a universe where actually in that bottomless pit, they did die. Um, that's interesting to think about. Uh, I love how Grunkle just disappears one frame. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> uh, there you go. Yeah. Okay. So that's that episode. The one whole thing is interesting to think about. I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Especially when we've got like UFO technology and stuff that they're trying to introduce. Uh, okay. So now let's go to the deep end. Once again, this is another episode where I don't think we're going to find anything. But it's interesting to look anyway. What does this say? Strongo the strong. He's really strong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, first of all, get him. Wait, is that the guy? Oh, I don't even know if that is the guy. That probably isn't the guy. Never mind. Uh, but this guy... Wait, is that Blendin? Hold on. No, it can't be. That's not Blendin, is it? Uh, let's have a look at Blendin's design. Wait, 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 wait. Let me go back. Okay. Let's look at Blendin's design. Okay, so this is Blendin. Uh, no, I don't think it's the same person. Unfortunately, it would have been really cool if there were more blending uh, cameos, but I don't think there will be because nothing has signified that could be the case. So that's unfortunate, but there you go. Uh, but what I was going to say is I love how this lady right here is reading pool jokes in the pool. <laughs> it's just so random. That's uh, an adorable drawing of <laughs> fish sticks for legs. <laughs> and then the the fish tank over the over the top on his head. Uh, once again, this episode nothing nothing I'm seeing really. What is this packet of chips? Oh, it's corn cornos. It looks Spanish. It looks like a Spanish name. Uh, this scene is really cool. I, I again, I love the three-dimensional kind of driving animations whenever there's a vehicle. It's really cool. Uh, oh, I think we return to this little Gideon sign in episode, in the last episode, is it? I think one of those episodes near the end. Uh, okay, and then we're back here. Oh, oh, I don't think this is the Butt Island uh, dock or whatever, but, you know. Yeah, there's no Butt Island here, unfortunately. That would have been a cool cool place to do this, though. But whatever. Um, oh, first kiss. Ah, oh, and then you swam off into the sunset. 
This is a cool shot as well. I think I used that for the thumbnail, actually. <laughs> for the thumbnail of my reaction to that. I think I used that. Uh, Sue's trying to steal the pool ducks. Get him! <laughs> uh, that is just what she reads out. I have like 17 hearts. More bottles on the way. I don't think mermaids are supposed to have 17 hearts, but there you go. And then here you go. 4th of July, by the way. 4th of July. Uh, so it seems like a full year has gone past or something. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. It's kind of insane. But nope, that, that episode didn't really have anything in it. Okay, let's go to Carpet DM. I'm expecting this one to have a little bit, just because there was like the whole experiment kind of lore or whatever. Uh, this is cool, by the way, this golf setup. I used to do stuff like this when I was a kid. I loved playing golf in my room and, and making courses outside in the garden and stuff. Uh, but it doesn't look like there's anything secret here. It's, it looks like a really cool course. Uh, I would want to play it. Looks like a world tour. They've got the Eiffel Tower here. Insane. They've got, a, they've got Monty Gator. Got an underwater section here. They've got the fan. Damn. Is that a Swiss flag? What is that? That's a, um, that's an instrument. What's it called? Uh, the bugle? No, not the bugle. Is it the Alphorn? I think it's the Alphorn. I don't know. Tell me in the comments. There's also one up here. So it seems like they've gone to Switzerland, maybe? Visit Swiss. Yeah, they've got loads of Swiss photos up here. So maybe they've had a trip to Switzerland at some point. Interesting. We have the invisible wizard joke over here. I am so happy I caught that when we first reacted to that episode. It's so fun. It's such a funny joke. <laughs> I can't believe it. Um, I don't know if the invisible wizard is actually a thing, though. Knowing this series, it probably is, and we just don't fully know it yet. Uh, I, I do realise we've actually been through this episode quite a lot because I was looking for the, the case of the caper cape case... Case of the Caper Case Caper, I think it was. Uh, and so I've actually seen quite a lot of this episode again. Uh, July 4th, by the way. July 4th, 1982. Uh, oh! Whoa! <gasps> Classy! Oh, interesting. So this was shut off on, like, the last time this room was used. July 4th, 1982, maybe? That's interesting. I think we did get the date 1984, or the year 1984, somewhere else, but I don't remember seeing that calendar. Experiment 78. I don't know. Got prism up here, which is like light uh, going into a prism. It, it makes a spectrum of colors, a uh, spectrum of wavelengths, um, because of how a prism, because of the shape of the prism. Um, and how how light retracts and stuff. July fourth. It does. It says electron carpet. Um, electrons have a negative charge. They, with energy, they can jump between different energy levels in an atom really easily. And they can go like down energy levels, and they they produce energy almost. Uh, so it might be a, a sort of thing where like energy was transferred between Dipper and Mabel and therefore they swapped thing. I, I don't think it's that deep though. This isn't like a sci-fi, this isn't like a sci-fi show. So what is this? Wolfman Bane Chest. Wolf, yeah, Wolfman Bane Chest. Okay, these books just keep getting weirder and weirder, man. Uh, <laughs> okay, so here we have a diagram of men, I guess. Is that the pituitary gl gland? Pass intermedia, posterior lobe, oh, I don't know. Pineal hypothalamus, pituitary gland, thyroid, parathyroids, thymus, adrenals. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second, boys. We've we've struck bingo. We've struck gold here. 
Uh, oops, I took a screenshot of the entire screen. I did not mean to do that. Uh, boys, look what's down here. L literally, boys. <laughs> Alright, so I'm a little bit scared for this one, actually, because if it's not any of the ciphers we already have, then that concerns me. Like, am I going to be able to actually solve this? But I imagine it's probably just an ordinary Caesar cipher. I don't know. Uh, I, I do see a D here. Like, I, I see a few Ds, which makes me think A is probably correct, but we'll see, we'll see. It is a very long code, <laughs> which is unfortunate because it means I have to type it all in here. I do want to one day make a quicker way of doing this, but at the moment I am not good enough at Google Sheets to do this. If I had Excel, I would be all over it. I'm not even going to lie. Okay, so it looks like it is a Caesar cipher because it spells puberty. So I'm a bit concerned for what this is going to say. Uh, <laughs> Uh, puberty is the, is this like subliminal messaging, you reckon? I reckon it is. It has to be. Okay, VW. Puberty is the greatest. Oh no. What is this going to say? Okay, it's going to say puberty is the greatest mystery of all time, I guess. Or of all Oh, oh, okay. Puberty is the greatest mystery of all. Okay, it's gonna, it's saying puberty is the greatest mystery of all. Also, go outside and make friends. There we go. That's a cool one. That's cool. It's nothing big, but it's cool, nevertheless. Bam. <laughs> I'm so glad that we got that. We have the gossiper now with less typos once again. <laughs> It seems like that's uh, that's always on the newspaper. What a weird place to put an I, by the way. So weird. Okay, I think we actually didn't get anything really in this episode, apart from that really cool code. I'm really glad that we're finding codes in these episodes. Uh, it gives me a lot of hope for the series. I'm assuming in season two, each episode is going to be full of them, which I'm kind of scared for because... I don't know if I'm going to be able to solve them all that easily, but I, uh, I'm enjoying them. I'm enjoying them at the moment. All right, we have got two more to go before we get into the big final two, which is going to take ages. But either way, can't wait. Also, there seems to be this weird pattern, right, with, this, with these books. Two yes, or yes, two no. Yes to no, yes to no, yes to no. This one's going to be no. I'll tell you that right now because this episode doesn't have anything to do with the book. Uh, but it was weird that there was a pattern there. Okay, this is cool. So cray cray. Yeah, that's, the, uh, that's a reference to the cray cray show or whatever that Mabel watches. Also, they're called several times. Cray cray, feet, lens flare, or lens flare, that's funny. We did get a lot of foreshadowing for this episode, actually. We, we've seen this band appear a lot throughout the episodes in the background and stuff. And so it's only when it comes to episode 17 when we actually get to like meet them and stuff and find out their true secret. Um, several times, Greggy C, Leggy P, Greggy G, Chubby Z and Deep Chris. <laughs> I did not know that was their names. Uh, I'm just looking to see if there's anything else here. I don't think there is. It seems like a lot of their merchandise is based around their names, like C, P, Z, G, and Chris or something. Um, you can see there's a Z up here and there's a G here. It seems like each of them uh, have their own pieces of merch and stuff. Oh yeah, this is the weird one where Robbie has the subliminal messaging in the thing. Okay, backstage personnel only. The brown meat sounds appetizing. Why is there a rib, a rib cage? Uh, I will not even ask. Um, well, I guess I already did, but 
Uh, oh, there seems to be some a lot of text here. Pit Cola, 49 cents. That is a bargain these days. The Duke Jaint. Okay. Which is the Duke box. Oh, that looks like Stan. Dimensional healing with thistle down. Okay. Oh, wait. Is it because it is... It is Grunkle Stan? Oh, it is Grunkle Stan. Never mind. I I was like, that looks like Grunkle Stan, strangely. Oh, and Rainbow. Okay, cool. I love when they do stuff like this. This is really cool when they, they have, like... I guess, like, animation styles that don't really um, coincide or, like, aren't necessarily uh, complementary. But they, they somehow make it work, you know? This is awful. This is so awful. Is that a freaking embryo? Oh my gosh. <laughs> and they're treated like hamsters. Once again, gold tooth. I don't know what it is with the series and everybody having a gold tooth, but it seems to be a thing. It seems to be another theme. So maybe all of this is in some way telling us something. What if everyone with a gold tooth is possessed by Bill Cipher or something? <laughs> I don't know. That's a crazy theory, but... Uh, you never know. Uh, we've got some DNA strands here. Some helix. Some double helix shapes. Interestingly, we have a license plate of the producer for the boys or whatever. And it has uh, 2012 on it. The date 2012. The year 2012. Oh my gosh. It's a year, Ozone. Uh, but there you go. So it seems 2012 is coming up a lot. And I think this was released in 2012. So, there you go. Yes, it was premier it premiered on uh, June 15th, 2012. So there you go. 2012, as I was saying. Damn, this show is 12 years old. Man, I have been missing out my entire life. Oh, I really... I wish I knew music better. I And I wish this was... Uh, I, I, I know music okay, and I can sort of read sheet music, but... I wish this was a secret so that we it would say like e equals mc squared. Obviously, there's no m. <laughs> there's no m on the thing. There's it. There is an e in the c. So you could have done an e note and then an m and then a c note or something, and it would be e equals mc squared. But um, so we've got some sound waves over here, some sine waves. Uh, that's one reason I don't really like this episode that much because. I feel like Mabel's characterization completely switches up. Like, she stops being cute, and she's really... She's just not very pleasant at all, and it's all because of a freaking gross boy band. Maybe it's just my hatred toward, uh, <laughs> toward boy bands. But no, 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 no. I, I have nothing against boy bands. I listen to plenty of boy bands, but not, like, not... These sorts of boy bands. God, they, they, these guys are so annoying. <laughs> I can't tell you how, how annoyed I am by them. Uh, Moneybags magazine. Okay. So it seems like bro has his own magazine. Okay. And on that note, that's the end of that episode. Literally nothing to report. Let's go to episode 18. The Land Before Swine. This is one of the better episodes, I actually think. Uh, it's really cute, obviously. Uh, here's another maze, so let's figure this out. So it's it's really easy. Uh, so there you go. Is this is also sort of foreshadowing, I guess, um, because you go down to the treasure and then you find out that there's a monster down there, and then you need to come back out. No, it's not really foreshadowing. <laughs> that's a, that's definitely a stretch. Captain Brains teasers. Uh, or Captain Brain Teaser's Fun Maze, ages 5 to 8, and this, this bro is doing it. I don't know how these guys are police officers, but uh, there you go. And here, here they are in front of that sign again, as I was saying before. It's not the last episode, it's it's episode 18, but there we go. Ah. Runes. <laughs> I actually have a separate page for runes now, there's so many. Uh... Here's the thing, it is consistent, I think. Uh, if we look at these, yep. Yeah. Yep, they are exactly the same. So, once again, I don't know if that's a good sign or a bad sign. I just know it's it's a sign. Like, 
all of these, this one, this one, this one, they are all the same. This one as well looks to be the top of this. So like this, if you know what I mean. Like uh, uh, none of them really fit, but you know what I mean. And then this one does match that, but it doesn't have the same here. So it's like the runes, they exist and they're consistent in some way. But is that like a good sign? Like that means it is certainly a code and these are all different letters. Or does that just mean it's just like an asset that they choose, chose to use and it doesn't have any bigger meaning? I don't know. I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place here. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we freaking go. Okay. By Toby Determined, reporter, Gravity Falls. A freak monster attack transformed Sheriff Blub's squad car into a stylish makeshift convertible late Friday night. <laughs> okay. We were in the middle of keeping the mean streets of Gravity Falls safe when all of a sudden the roof was ripped straight off my squad car, Blub said. Deputy Durland was also present during the incident. There's no feeling better in the world than driving with the top down and feeling the breeze whipping through your hair. Makes you feel alive, Durland stated. No charges have been filed against the giant winged monstrosity whose whereabouts and origin are unknown. Although Blubs hopes to see the savage creature in small claims court at some point in the near future. Small claims court, oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, and then Sheep Snatched, here we go, by Toby Determined. Uh, Gravity Falls, after an exhaustive five-day uh, search throughout the thick forest of Gravity Falls, three sheep remain victims of sheep snatching. If there's one thing I have zero tolerance for, it's sheep snatching, Jim Storch, owner of Storch Farm, said. Some kind of giant bird is what did it. I've never seen anything like it before. If scientists haven't already named this particular species of bird, they ought to call it sheep snatcher on account of how good it is at snatching sheep. <laughs> you might say that the flying creature also snatched away Storch's heart. I loved these sheep more than anything, Storch said as his tears streamed down his weathered face. A candlelight vigil is being planned. Oh, and that's it. Damn it! Uh, I want to hear more. Uh, and then we've got a footprint down here, which is obviously the, the dinosaur footprint. And then Gravity Falls, local miners thought they were on the verge of striking... Oh my gosh, oops. Uh, on the verge of striking a rich mineral deposit early on Wednesday. Instead, they uh, discovered a massive network of mysterious caverns. Several miners are uh, missing after exploring the area. Those who returned reported hearing loud high-pitched screeches. Some, ins some insist the sounds came from a giant... Oh my gosh. Uh, giant... This is so difficult to see. Some insist the sounds came from a giant prehistoric creature somehow left over from the late Jurassic period. Okay. Uh, Dagamoblin? What does that say? I don't know what that says, but exclaimed Jack Solomon, owner of the troubled mining company. Where's the canary when you need him? He's supposed to drop dead when something's wrong. The caged canary has since been fired. Uh, ecologists are working with blank. Okay. So those are just multiple, multiple reports about the topics of uh, the topic of this episode, which is this big dinosaur. They've got some pit cola. Uh, it works for pigs. <laughs> I can't believe that. Oh, this this episode is so cute because of Mabel and and what's his name? Waddles. Waddles' uh little intro part. It's really funny. So here we have uh Dipper in a dark room trying to get the photos to work and then Seuss comes in with all the light. It's that's a funny scene. Oh, 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 oh. it's even worse when it's in slow motion. <laughs> Why can't you hear a dinosaur? Or why can't you hear a pterodactyl in the toilet? Because it's peered silent. <laughs> uh, okay. So it seems like we're we're in a, like a church here. Is it? Am I right in saying this is a church? It sure looks like a church, and it's got uh, stained glass windows as well. 
Oh yeah, it's definitely. They've got the pews. Is it a pew? I don't know what it is. But they've got like the seating areas that look like they're reminiscent of being inside of a church. Uh, it's a cool area. Oh, I love how she keeps looking back at the photo of her and <sighs> BFFs. Oh my god. It's so sad. This episode is so sad. Uh, but yeah, here we go. Dinosaurs. We saw this in Blendin's clothing. Uh, I actually had comments of people saying that people didn't realize that this was foreshadowed, which is crazy. Cause like, this is the, the one thing that I did see on my first watch when we saw Blendin. I saw a dinosaur and I was like, oh my gosh, are we gonna see dinosaurs? Or was that like far in the past? Uh, but people didn't catch that on their first watch. Oh my God, I just realized Wait, okay. So first of all, in the newspaper, they talked about the miners that have gone missing. These are the miners because one of them is wearing a mining helmet and one of them's got a pickaxe or whatever. And then, and then if you also look in the nest, there's the top of the police car. How did I miss that? That's so funny. That's such a funny detail. Uh, but there you go. There's, there's the top of the police car. Oh, look at them in the back. Oh, that's cute. And Dipper looks scarred for life. Zeus is just happy as, as ever. Uh, and then here he comes back with uh, with his musical spoons, which he also mentioned earlier in the episode. Oh my God, that episode is actually really good. And then here Grunkle Stan says that he had four aces, but they're play I think they're playing Texas Hold'em poker. Because, you know, look, Waddles has two cards. And obviously Waddles knows how to play Texas Hold'em. Uh, but there's only one ace on the bridge. Um, I mean, what I will say is, is everybody does have a flush. <laughs> everybody has a flush right away because all of these are aces. Uh, but if you have, if you have a queen and a jack, if you have a jack and a queen, you could get a, a straight flush. Anyway. We're not playing poker, we're watching Gravity Falls, so there you go. So guys, we have found all of this. So we have discovered that there's quite a bit of book contents in quite a few of the episodes, and we've discovered two extra codes, one of them really vague, and one of them probably completely irrelevant. Puberty is the greatest mystery of all. Also, go outside and make friends. Thanks. It's basically telling me to touch grass. Uh, but yeah, blind, I still don't really know. I I guess it just has to do with Bill Cipher and the fact that he is a Cyclops creature and there's lots of eye imagery and stuff. He's just a pyramid with an eye. Um, so I guess maybe we'll learn more in season two. I, I don't know what blind could mean other than that, really. We'll see, I think. And obviously, it goes without saying, I'm sure people have already said anyway, but please don't tell me. Please don't tell me the answer to this. I want to try and figure it out myself. The only thing at this point you are allowed to tell me is what Happy Now Ariel means. Because, you know, we've watched this episode like three times now at this point, and I have never heard of an Ariel at all. Uh, so there you go. It could be something completely different. All right, but now, now I am really excited because we finally, after all of this time, get to go through episode 19 and episode 20, the two biggest episodes of the season. And we're going to find all of the codes, all of the secret messages or whatever that might be in these episodes, and hopefully some secret meaning. I'm really hoping my FNAF theorizing power is going to be put to good use here. Uh, but we open up on this shot, and obviously in episode number 20, we open up on the same shot, uh, though I think it's actually a little bit sunnier, which is weird. Anyway, um, we have the same shot opening on 20, showing that they are connected. Obviously, one of them is, one of them says to be continued, and then the next one is the continued episode. Uh, <laughs> I love how this game is called Conflict Boat. <laughs> That's quite funny. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. Just making sure that that is the regular alphabet. Otherwise, it could be a cipher. You never know. 
Could be a code. Oh my gosh, you can move this? I didn't realize. This entire time, I could have just had it down here. That's that's weird. I did not realize you could do that. Oh, well, that's quite helpful. <laughs> I got, uh, oh, is this the photocopier? Is it? I think it might be because this is the warning sign and it had like Peligro on it or something on it. And we didn't know what Peligro mean. Or meant. Mean. <laughs> uh, so here we go. This is where Gideon takes out the book. And he's like, oh, you, you, your head is not as safe as you may think. Uh, and then, yeah, Bill Cipher. Zoom into Bill Cipher. So excited. So excited to get into this episode. <laughs> Good enough entertainment incorporated at the top. That's funny. Uh, but it shows those characters, which is how Mabel made it up in episode two with the hamster balls. And that's also why Grunkle Stan uh, has it in his mind because Mabel was showing him. Uh, so that's why it is it is in, in the mind of Grunkle Stan in the end. Uh, I don't know, that's just a theory, really. What is this dead creature, by the way, in the back? Is it a possum? It, it seems to be in a lot of the episodes, and I haven't pointed it out yet, and I don't know why. What is a nyaf? All right, here we go. I think he actually says some words here. Also, question mark out of smoke? Combinations. I think. Open your mind, Stanford. We'll see what my new... Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So we've already got a lot to, to cover here. Ah, oh, shoot. <laughs> okay, creature number 326. Name, question mark, question mark, question mark. This odd triangular being has appeared in my dreams every night for weeks. Oh boy. Oh god. Okay. Interesting. I can't quite read that. Ten symbols. What's the significance? Okay. Interestingly, glasses has exclamation marks pointed towards it. Interesting. What does that mean? What does that mean for the law? Because... If like we've we've talked about this so so much, and we've even talked about it uh, quite a bit in this episode, but obviously, Seuss, Wendy, Grunkle Stan, Dipper, Gideon, author of the books, uh, who we think to be Old Man McGucket, uh, maybe Waddles, Mabel, Robbie, and then who's this? You know, this is this has always been one of the weird ones. Because this is Grunkle Stan's glasses. Uh, but you can't be Grunkle Stan if these are all different characters. Uh, and equally, 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 this can't be the writer of the book because the writer must be down here because six fingers. That is six, right? Yeah, six fingers. So this, these can't be the same character. So who is this? What is his purpose? Um, so I don't, I don't know. Uh, we do have more matrices, which I'll talk about in a, in a minute. Um, or at least I'll try to. I don't know if I can come up with anything better than what we got last time. Here we have the negative $12 bill. Uh, this is quite interesting. This is very clearly the Eye of Providence. Semper Virgil... Okay, Centre Vigilantem. Vig vigilantem. Oh, okay, Vigilantem. Semper means always in Latin. Integral part of Civil Air Patrol's motto, Semper Vigilans, meaning always vigilant or always ready. Okay. Always ready. So I guess, like, you can summon him whenever you need him, because he, he's always ready or something. I don't know. There seems to be, like, an eye on the right. Uh... So this, this obviously goes back to the episode where we found the the blind uh, the blind code. So this is about summoning him. He's in my wallet. Could blind eye be like the the silhouette version of him as well? Because we got blind eye in episode twenty. 
Uh, what does 816 mean? 816 three times? Again, it's the number three, obviously three points of a triangle. I'm looking at 816 as an angel number and I don't think it's really coming up with anything other than, I guess there was, there was a thing about uh, spiritual wealth, spiritual growth. What was, what was, where was it? Uh, a stern reminder from the universe that materialism and a lack of spiritual balance threaten to, dera to derail your life path. Like, materialism, again, like, Bill Cypher wanting to come into fruition. I'm stuck, man. I don't, I don't know. Uh, so let's look at this. So... What does that, what is that doing? There's actually nothing else here. Uh, so basically, what I'm looking at, in the intro screen, we've looked at these matrices, and I've said it, it looks like a 2D to 3D projection matrix. Um, so basically, you've got, some, you've got some 2D coordinates and functions, and what you're doing is you're using this uh, transformation, this linear transformation matrix, and you're essentially projecting it into 3D coordinates. Um, what what we only saw in the intro screen, however, is these matrices down here. And the ones above, this is the first time seeing them, it seems to be exactly the same. Uh, the only addition we have is this vector here. Hx, Hy, H, and 1. Uh, so I guess that's just the output of what you get when you multiply these together. But why H? I don't know. I don't think that's going to get me anywhere. I think my best bet right here is, is that this is just a projection matrix. Um, I can't really tell you anything more. Uh, also, Curia in fan. Can we see the rest of it? We can't. Cur what does Curia... Okay, what does Curia mean? Oh, Curia Infantilum. Uh, meaning? Curia in many senators in the Senate labor. Curate means careful. Okay, Infantilum sounds like infatuate. <gasps> uh, infatuate caution or something. I don't. I don't know what that means. Okay, I think we'll probably need the full ribbon before we can solve that. A new minion has to say about that. Triangulum, entangulum. Triangulum, entangulum. Okay, is this actually gonna mean anything? Oh, triangulum is a small constellation in the northern sky. Its name is Latin for triangle. Okay, Latin for triangle. Uh, what was the other one? Entangulum. <laughs> Connect with Bill Cypher, free magic spell. That's funny. Uh, I mean, it looks like this is what he's saying, right? Uh, let's just play this. Triangulum. Entangulum. Very for us. Okay, okay, okay. So that that is that is what he's saying. Uh, so I'm just going to copy this if that's okay. I think it's Latin. So let's do Latin, Latin to English. Put in here. Ooh, the triangle. The triangle. The Venifer, the master of the mind, the liar came to me. The triangle, the triangle, the Venifer. What is a Venifer? Venifer? Don't know. Iron Sucrose. What? <laughs> what? What does that mean? Master of the mind is quite obvious. The liar came to me. I, I mean, maybe that is a mistranslation, but I guess it sort of makes sense. Obviously, the triangle part means makes a lot of sense. Um, Oh, that's backwards. That's backwards. That's backwards. We need to replay that or rewind that. Oh yeah, fun fact. This is currently the video you're watching right now. Look at <laughs> Look at how long this is. This is what you've been watching the whole time. <laughs> it's so long. There's so many parts to it. <laughs> But I have got Dreamscaperers here, and we are going to go to the part.
where he talks backwards. Uh, so it's around here. So let's have a look. Okay, cool. And I think it's around here where it stops. Okay. So we want to reverse this and see what it says. Uh, reverse speed. Here we go. Oh boy, this is exciting. <laughs> no way, they just, he just said, he just said backwards message, backwards mess. oh for frick's sake. <laughs> Let's hear that again. That's so funny. That's so good. Ah, oh, frick. I got got, guys. I got got. Name's Bill Cipher. And I take it you're some kind of living ventriloquist dummy? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know who you are, Gideon. What, what? I take it you're just some ventriloquist dummy? He is a ventriloquist in the sense that he has those puppets of, uh, of like, Dipper and Mabel and Grunkle Stan. He plays around with them at home. Um... But that's a very interesting. Whenever, whenever the word ventriloquist is thrown around in series, it's quite, it has quite deep meaning usually. Who the frick is that? Who is that? That's a president of the United States, and I have no idea who it is. Uh, uh, UFOs? No! How did I miss the UFOs? Okay, so this is. This is a president of the United States of America. Let's have a look at some of the presidents. All right. Uh, oh, God, this is going to be hard. I, he he looks like someone that I've seen, but I can't... John F. Kennedy. Is that John F. Kennedy? Yeah, that looks like, that looks like JFK. Right? No. Well, a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> It looks a little bit like JFK. Um, I mean, it's not gonna like any of the old presidents. I'd say JFK is my best bet. <laughs> um, and it's also like, I know a lot of things. Um, and he's, and it's like a lot of conspiracies, JFK, UFOs. This thing looks like a, uh, it's one of the things that Grunkle Stan has in the Mystery Shack, I think. Uh, interesting, he flashes the the book number three here, um, and and the reason I say that's interesting is because Gideon doesn't know about book number three here, so he, he must have missed this. Uh, but I, I mean, I missed it too. And then here we go about like the conspiracy thing, moon landing as well. Uh, so we have the moon landing here. Uh, that's part of the book. Here we have a skull. Weird. This is Stonehenge. Like a real image of Stonehenge as well. This is the Pyramids of Giza. Uh, oh, interesting shot there. Of Grandcle Stan going into the basement. This is just... Oh my gosh! No way! That's the Sasquatch or the Bigfoot that we found. That I uh, that I paused on in the intro. No way he reappears in Bill. That's crazy. That's so crazy. And it like this is such an obscure frame as well, right? It's like it's quite pixelated. Like you wouldn't you wouldn't know what this was unless you've seen this frame before. So great job to the show's creators. Uh, this is also a shot of the book. What is this? It feels reminiscent of Grunkle Stan and like what he has on the hat and stuff. Uh, I couldn't tell you what this is. This looks like a telescope of some sorts. I don't know. Uh, I feel like we've seen this guy before as well. Oh, that's uh, Northwest, isn't it? That's Pacifica Northwest's father or something that founded Gravity Falls, but actually he didn't. I think it might be that. One penny? I don't know what that is. Uh, that is a shot from inside Grunkle's basement. 
I have no idea what that is. That looks like... Oh, I don't know. Uh, this is a jail. I guess, a Colombian prison. UFOs again. That wheel again. Okay. But genuinely, I didn't see any of that when we, uh, when we first watched through. Like, what? Lots of things. I can't believe... Like, it's so clear now what all of those frames are, but I did not see any of that on my first watch through. I swear I saw something else completely different. Crazy. Uh, and then he pulls out some, uh, some deer's teeth. Love it. So then he says, uh, Stan, Stan Pines, and then he's like, Stan Pines, I know that name. What is this? That has to be important in some way. That symbol. I don't know what that means, but it, it must be important. I have no idea. I just, I genuinely just don't have any ideas. Oh no, okay. Oh god, it's, it's, it's gotten to the point where I see like secret codes and stuff. And at this point I'm like, oh shoot, this is, <laughs> this is not gonna be solved. Uh, this is definitely something. That's definitely something, I just don't know if I'll be able to solve it. Let's see, if we say that last one is an E, because it seems to be quite common. We have something, something, something E. Thing is, I don't, I don't think it is that actually. Um, because, because we have two E's at the end. Frick! I don't know if I can do this. Because uh, what we, what we do have is we have two umbrellas here and we have two ends here answers i think that is or is it no i don't know it's, it is a rune of some sort but either way if this is some secret language then um we can we can probably figure out what this says i just don't know if i can do that right now and i don't think those are ease so i give up <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I don't give up. I, I I say that as a joke. Like we we can go back to that if we want to. I've got a screenshot of it now, um, so we can go back to it. We keep seeing this thing, and I'm so confused what this is. We just see loads of like E's that are like upside down and left and right and stuff. What I will say is it does sort of tie into this code right here. We got a backwards E, uh, domestic, and then the. Domestic. I would have thought this was like a, a like a picture of a brain or something, and it would show like Bill Cipher in the brain, but no. Uh, and then, of course, let's not forget about the Caesar at Bash A one Z twenty six. Is he watching me at the top? Uh, I guess this is probably. Well, no, it's not going to be how you how you find out the final because obviously the final, the final uh, code of the season. You have to do A one Z twenty six and then at bash and then cipher, so you have to go backwards through them. But I don't think this is telling us that at the moment. I don't think this is telling us how to solve that. Uh, has improved has proven himself to be me. Nope, don't know what any of this means. Oh, hang on, it pans to the right. I didn't know. Oh yeah, so this is a brain. So reflect reflectives domestic the ladies. So it seems to go in the back of the brain? Back of the head? Oh god, there's even more stuff in the background as well. This also reminds me of like the lens thing. Like this looks like an eyeball. And then this is a triangle obviously. And it looks like it's in perfect focus with the triangle. Do not summon at all costs. Well then. Okay guys. Here we are. <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna do with this, but this is where a lot of codes are going to reside. So here we have PB, this is gonna say Mystery Shack, I can almost guarantee, but I just wanna make sure that this is uh, uh, Caesar. I think it is because a B is definitely gonna be a Y, so it is definitely Mystery. Yeah, this is gonna be a Cypher, a uh, Caesar Cypher, I, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'm not even going to check, really. But then we have O-A-U-V-C, is that? Uh, what I'm noticing about this one on the roof is O is one before P, A is one before B, 
U is one before V. V is one before W. C and H, that doesn't make sense. Uh, oh, that's because this is a G. And a G is one before H. Okay. So that makes more sense. And yeah, I can see it's a G now. Uh, I thought it was a C. But, um, okay, so we have... But what does that mean? Does that mean that the Caesar cipher has changed? Is it two letters back and it's just mist, mist, misty? <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense. Like, also, why why would it only be two letters back for that one? I don't know. I really don't have a clue. But I guess we've solved it. <laughs> I don't have any other ideas, so that's probably what it is. Oh, okay. We got more runes. <laughs> Of course, even in Stan's mind, we have runes. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, and so here we have memories. So all of these are from different episodes, I think. So top left, we have uh, from the episode with the president. I forget what it's called. What's it called? Irrational treasure. This is where he's stuck in the thingy. Uh, that one underneath it. I don't think we've seen. Unless I'm mistaken. This is obviously Boss Mabel, where he wins all the cash, but he doesn't actually. This is the Time Traveler's Pig episode. That's where he has all of the uh, things for the lawsuits. This is the episode, the, the, the Land Before Swine. This is the fishing episode, the Gobblewonka. Uh, and then this looks like the Double Dipper episode, because it's a party. I'm not sure, though. That's the episode, that's Carpet DM, because he suces the pig there. And then all the way on the right, I don't quite know. Yeah, I'm not very sure. Uh, I'm not sure on the one on the right, but there you go. I feel like such a boomer. I, I can only spend like two minutes at a time <laughs> sat at a desk watching at this point. But uh, I am I am slowly recovering. Don't worry. I'm not going to be ill forever. I am I am recovering. It has been a few days, but I'm recovering. Uh, but this should be the last session. We should get through the last uh, parts of this. So let's get into the rest of Dreamscaperers. Here I'm seeing Grunkle Stan is in Colombian prison. That is in fact the Colombian flag. Uh, and what I will say is this was foreshadowed, or well not foreshadowed, but he talked about Colombian prison, uh, before, I think. I can't remember what episode that was, but he did. Uh, this says Viva Colombia, and there's tally marks, I don't think that's gonna mean anything. Unless it's like FNAF, where tally marks give you the name of a really important character. This guy has a scar on his head, this guy has an eye patch. Then Grunkle Stan is just here. Uh, <laughs> S618. Okay. Okay, bro. What is this 618? What is 618? I don't know. I don't know what 618 means. It just seems to appear a lot. So much. Uh, this sort of looks like it could be Bill. But it, but it isn't. It's 811S. Which is weird because the other ones have a letter before and then so maybe this is backwards so it should be or it should be upside down so it's S one one eight. Dunno. And then D one one twenty two. Don't think that means anything, but S six one eight seems to be connected to Stan, I think. Right? I think we're saying that it's connected to Stan in particular. I think it's the number of his house and stuff, so there you go. Uh, stand back. It sucks more than anything. I don't know why there's a Grunkle Stan crab here. I don't know what the implication of that is, especially when we're talking about Dipper's memories here. But I don't know. I don't know what that could reference. This part was really sad, but then we found out the true nature of it, and it got even sadder, but in a, in a good way. What is this? What is he looking at here? I don't know. Uh, there's so many frames in this that could just be like, what? what's going on in here? Like, these must be random frames from 
different episodes that you could probably piece together, but I can't for sure. Uh, interesting good shot of Bill Cipher down on the floor here. And then Grunkle Stan going in. This is a different code. That is a different code. But I don't think that's going to mean anything, really. It's just weird that it's a different code, that they didn't animate it the same. Uh, <laughs> what is that? I guess it's just like a mystery shack thing, but I can't tell what that is. It looks like some sort of futuristic god or, so, or even like ancient god. Yeah, here we go. 618 Gopher Road. That's his address. So 618 appears a lot. Uh, don't particularly know what that means though. As, again, I, I looked up like the angel numbers and stuff, but 618 appears a lot without any meaning really. Um, which is interesting. I think we've got to find some meaning to that. Here the uh, bottomless pit returns. I love it when shows do things like this, where it's like, it's just a one-off joke, but it's so funny. Nothing's more bottomless than the bottomless pit. Whoa, what was that? <laughs> uh, it's really funny. I love this Bill Cipher design. It's really cool. And then here we have alchemy symbols again. These are definitely alchemy. Uh... Like, like these 100%, like you can tell by the little um, like curls on the ends, these are alchemy and the font is the same throughout this, the series. Um, this one just shows up everywhere. Oh, there you go. Like, yeah, all of those are alchemy. And then the fire comes in as well, which kind of further even supports the fact that it's alchemy. Huge Grunkle Stan head comes out of nowhere. He can dream anything imaginable or he can create anything dreamable or whatever. Um, and then he grows to like a hundred times his size. Uh, Jersey Vultures. Jersey Vultures, I think it said in the back. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. We have a boxing class here. Strong in the back. Don't know what, I guess it says fight behind him. Uh, is that Stan's father? I think it is, right? Left hook! What is she wearing? Uh, that's a poodle. I'm gonna be so haunted if uh, that's actually wrong. Oops, I spelt dog wrong, but yes, it's it's a poodle. It's one of these. Yep, yeah, that looks right to me. Uh, again, literally doesn't have any relevance whatsoever, but interesting detail that they put there, at least. I always wondered if the Kitten Fists were a reference to Bojack Horse, or maybe it's the other way around. When did Bojack Horseman season one come out? Uh, 22nd of August, 2014. So that would be after this, right? So, so basically, in Bojack Horseman, let me find it. Where would it be? Uh, in Bojack Horseman, you have this character. Uh, and that is obviously like a pink kitten. It's quite similar. But then you also have Sarah Lynn. This is Sarah Lynn. And this is voiced by Kristen Scholl, who voices Mabel. I don't know how to say her name, but... They, they voice the same person, so there's like a connection here. So maybe this is like inspiration for Bojack or something, but probably not. Uh, I would imagine not. And then the wheel comes out. I'll be watching you. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's so good. And that's Dreamscapers. Uh, I always get the chills whenever I see this. It's like, boom, and then the family's there. And they're like, oh no. And then they see the sign drop. And then, bam, to be continued. We've never seen a to be continued before. Which shows the stakes of this, right? It shows the the pressure that they must feel. And, and the fact that this, this does have high stakes. Uh, and we see that in the next episode. We still have the eyes in the trees. I wonder if there is a secret frame here with a freaking Sasquatch again. I will die if there is. Uh, I, I doubt that there is, but if there is, I don't know what to say about the series. Like, it's just so good. Um, but I don't think there is. I'm not seeing any secret frames. Taking it one frame at a time. 
Okay, so that's Dreamscaperers. Interesting. Um, so it seems like... I mean, actually, there wasn't that much there in the grand scheme of things. Um, I thought there was going to be a lot more, but obviously there was the few codes that we broke. And there was the backwards message, backwards message, backwards message! <laughs> so this is the final episode that we're going to go through. Gideon rises. I... I'm kind of scared for this when we open up on the same exact shot. Here's, oh, I, I just realized here's an overhead view of the town, uh, as we've seen in freaking, what's it called? Uh, Fight Fighters. At the end of Fight Fighters, we had the map. Uh, so you have the muffin thing here, water tower. You have Butt Island. Um, and then I guess somewhere down here is the Mystery Shack. And then here is where the huge Gideon... Uh, here's where the huge Gideon falls from the bridge, uh, etc. Uh, okay. So is there going to be anything else in this episode? I imagine there's going to be less in this episode, actually. Seuss age nine or... Oh, look, Seuss is a black belt? Since when? Since when? I did not know that. Uh, what other decorations are there in his grandma's house? There's an angel statue, I think. Unless I'm wrong. It is an angel statue right there. Okay. Are they religious? Ha ha ha. He said that he used that out of con they used that out of context, but I don't know what the context of that could be. Uh here's the kind of foreshadowing of the pins that, you know, are, are watching everyone's moves and are messing up uh the hearing aid a lot of different statues here right could be foreshadowing could be uh is that gideon at the top who is that maybe it's uh maybe it's the grandfather uh but we have some angel statues on the bottom left and then like a clown or we have some some clowns and looks like a gnome but maybe it's like an elf or something i don't know is that cowboy Seuss? Oh my gosh. Why is there just a random massive tub of jelly here? Literally half the size of her. Man. That's the photo we saw before as well. Okay. <laughs> I will vacuum the walls. Ah, <laughs> uh, this is one of the saddest scenes. I don't know why this made me cry so much, but when, when Stan was on the phone to Dipper and Mabel's parents, and he was like, yeah, we have enough food. Yeah, there's, there's enough to eat. And then Mabel was like, Grandpa Stan, can we order pizza? And he gets out his pockets. And, oh, my God. It's actually the music a lot of the time. The music um, really hits home. Like, it's hits hard. Like, it's really, it's really good. Um, it's just really tragic, you know? Like, oh, God, the only thing in the fridge is milk. Like, nightmare. Absolute nightmare. Because Grandpa Stan wants to, just wants to provide the best for them, but he can't do that. And so that's why he sends them home. He has to love them and leave them. It's it's really tragic. Um, we've got some construction workers. Book number two. Okay. This is where he tells Waddles to frick off, which, I mean, he can frick off himself. Um, all right. Oh, God. Okay. So here, here is where it gets interesting. Possible hiding places. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is going to take a while. So, possible hiding places. So, I don't know. Temporary spots? Okay. I don't know if we can do anything with this. Uh, north, south, east, west. Obviously, this is, this is a map. I guess this could be the uh, mystery shack, but... I doubt it. I don't see no bottomless pit anywhere. <laughs> but I guess all of these areas are like vicinities of where uh, it could be hidden. And then we have this device here, which, you know, allow me to allow me to uh, research in the first episode again. Yes, we're going way back to the first episode again. I mean, you can't blame me. Arguably, the last episode is just like... Uh, a remix of the first episode. So here, he finds a secret panel in this uh, fake tree. 
and he finds this device. This is the same device. Look at that. That is identical. That is absolutely, that is what I call identical. That was exactly what I was looking for. Uh, oh, you even see the tree here. I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't even see the tree here. So yeah, a, a hatch in the tree. And then you have this device that's in the tree, as you can see up here. Uh, so system three, sorry, you probably can't see the, the thing. Um, so yeah, we have the same device. And then it says system three, patent pending. Okay. And then here, okay, let's skip the binary for now. Beware of nesting uh, squirrels, cool. Uh, some random numbers in the bottom. Could be a page number, but I'm not sure. And then, okay. Or what does it say? Security monitor slash location, I think it is. I think that's what it says. Uh, reset binary sequence. Okay, so this is something that I'm going to need to screenshot and try and work out. Oh, one, oh, one, 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 oh, that's only seven. That is only seven. That tells me this probably isn't going to be correct, but let's just write it all out in one, you know? You never know. Oh, 101, 100, 1, Okay, what this tells me already is this this isn't gonna be a number, obviously. It's obviously it's not gonna be a number. But the reason it it's I'm telling but the reason I know that it's because there's a zero at the beginning and this zero doesn't actually matter in terms of uh, in terms of numbers because if you think about how binary works it takes the first digit and it does 2 to the 0th power which is 1 so that is a 1 2 to the first power is 2 so that's going to be a 2 and then 2 to the second power oops 2 to the second power is 4 so that's going to be a 4 and then 8 and then uh, 16, 32, etc. I keep doing that. So this is going to be a 4 plus a, a 64 plus a 512 plus a 1024, etc. Uh, but obviously when you get to this point, this 0 is, isn't needed. It's going to be the same number whether or not the 0 is there or not. So that's interesting. Uh, so it's probably going to be, if, if anything, if anything, it's going to be letters. But even then, I don't think this is going to be anything. We got a D. We got a D out of that. I'll, I'll show you why. I, and I think I said this before when we were doing other binary. Uh, I can't remember because it was a few days ago at this point. But what binary does is in text, it, it separates. It, you have a string of eight numbers. Yeah, okay, so we don't have eight. Yeah, okay. What the frick? Okay, let's forget about that. It doesn't work because you're supposed to have eight let eight numbers per letter, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That isn't going to be a letter, but 101-0-1-0-0 could be a letter. Uh, could definitely be a letter. Uh, I'll show you right now. Uh, this could be a letter. Okay, it's it's a it's some sort of symbol. I don't know, but there you go. Oh yeah, and just remember, um, I, like I just thought about this. I, I was just like, why is there a patent pending on this machine when this machine already exists, right? It already exists within the tree, etc. But this is the person writing the book. This isn't Gideon. This is a um, a memory back to the author of the book writing the book. Um, I must say though, doesn't look like McGucket's silhouette that much. But it, it could just be like a, yeah, it, it probably doesn't matter. We have a Bill Cipher here. Is that the town hall? Interesting. We have Gideon. And he thinks that he only needs two books. But he actually needs three, because there's three of them. There's three of them! <laughs> there's my Gideon impression. No, it's it's really it's really bad. It's shocking. 
Oh, bro, if you think I'm decoding that, you are mistaken. <laughs> I am not decoding that. Um, I'm just gonna put it out there. I'm not doing this right now. There's no way. There's no way. How am I supposed to do that? I mean, I could. I, I, there's probably a way of doing it, but I don't know. Like, it just seems pretty out there that I, I don't know. It just, in terms of code breaking, Gravity Falls is like, what is going on? Gravity Falls is up there as, as one of the, like the, the, you have to be the most impressive code breaker to solve this franchise. Like, it's insane. Look at this. I will say there's there's a lot of similar symbols over here. Uh, not over here, over here. Oh, wait. Wait a second. These should be the same. They are not. Oh. So that's interesting, right? That these aren't consistent, even though they're the same page. They are exactly the same page. You can even see the three, seven, six, nine, or five, nine. And it like all of these lines as well. Ha, huh. weird. And both of them are from Dipper's book as well. Ha, huh. maybe when, uh, no, cause we're not gonna see the top of that, are we? I, I was thinking maybe this, this circle wheel thing could be a, a way to decipher, but probably not. Some interesting symbols up here as well that I'll just quickly take a screenshot of. Gravity Fools has got me working. <laughs> oh, that's really cool. That's a really cool detail. Uh, so this is the same exact page as the gnomes page that we see in episode number one. But you'll notice a difference. There's blue markings, weakness, leaf blowers. Because I remember there being that spot there um, for like, for leaf blowers. Oh, sorry, that, I remember that being a spot there for weaknesses. It says weakness, and then just a line and a question mark. But now, now that we've seen the gnomes and we know their weakness, now, now they've filled it in. But we also know that their other weakness is going to be that squeaky freaking whistle noise that Gideon has. Um, that Gideon uses on the pig as well. Oh, God. Gideon. Gideon is a pig. Nom? Oh, gnome. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's a really stupid joke. Okay. There's three of them. I love that scene. Ah, here's the bus service, Speedy Beaver. So this must be the bus service that goes from Gravity Falls to... Uh, to, oh my gosh, I need to rewind my mind to back when we first started this video and we talked about like American geography. Uh, was it, uh, it wasn't California, was it? I don't remember. It was on the, on the west side of the US, but um, this is where they go back home. They, they go on the Speedy Beaver, which is also shown in the intro. That's the water tower, oh, Tipper, oh, Mabel. <laughs> I always get sad at this episode. I always get so freaking sad. That does look like a face, to be honest. Um, not much to dissect here at all, apart from the cool ass, uh, oh my gosh, this animation, it goes underappreciated. Uh, nothing to see except the, uh, the cool fighting. Um, and wow, I love this shot too. That, that could be a good desktop background. <laughs> I bet so many people had that as their desktop background when this episode, episode aired. Um, there you go. They get journal three back, which is a cool detail, which I actually didn't fully notice. But there you go. Um, there's going to be a lot of people here. So we've got the police officers. Let's see who else we've got. Uh, we got Pizza Guy, we got Lazy Susan, we've got Manly Dan. Ah! No! No! Okay, the weirdest part is I didn't even spot him here. I only spotted him when he was walking away here. Freaking Blendin' Blandin's here! 
Okay, he's he's literally right there. What? Why is he here? Okay, so what that tells me, because we, we didn't know, we didn't see him foreshadowed to be here at all. I didn't even expect him to come up in the rest of the series. I thought it was just a one-trick pony, you know? I thought he was going to be in one episode, and it turns out he was in those other three episodes that were shown in that episode. But no, no, it turns out he's probably going to be in season two, right? I, I wouldn't doubt it. I, I wouldn't doubt it. I think he probably has, like, what is he doing here? So maybe we're going to have an episode in season two about him, and it's going to show a flashback to this moment, and we're going to see what he, what he's actually doing here. Because maybe, maybe there's like a parallel universe where Gideon wins or something, and we'll see that, and I don't know, man. I, I like the idea of parallel universes, because it, it will show like alternate alternate outcomes and stuff, uh, and the time traveler will be, will be like trying to fix it and stuff. Um... This is the police officer in a bath. This is a guy flying a kite. Someone on a swing. Is that the bouncer guy? Or something? That's the... Uh, that's from the Gobblewonker episode, I think. This is... Uh, get him! <laughs> uh, pizza guy eating pizza, as always. You know what? This is interesting. This is interesting because this is a symbol that we see... In the code, I guess it is just an E, but like, what does this mean? E, me, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, I'll, I'll remember it though. This was such a funny scene. I can assure you, that is disgusting or whatever. Here you get a close up of these shots actually. Uh, oh my gosh, what's going on here? <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, that's cool. That's a really cool detail. As he spins this around, the camera in the back pans to show their faces. Wow. And then we see that shot. That's cool. Are we, we going to see any more blending? I think it's probably just going to be that shot where we see blending. But wow, that was a really cool detail. I'm glad we found something like that. Um... Because otherwise, these last two episodes would have been a little disappointing in terms of details. But maybe I was hyping up way too much. What does he have in his pockets? He has an axe. Some sort of... Is that... I don't know what that is. It's like a screwdriver. Not a screwdriver, but... Like a chisel or something. Some paper. That's a wallet with a lot of cash. Like a wad of cash. That's a picture of Mabel, of course. A list, I guess. And then book two. And then the deed, another piece of paper, some keys, candy. Uh, and yeah, the, the deed is the second most important thing in this shot. Uh, and the reason I, I thought Grandcle Stan didn't know what the books were at first is because he specifically picks up the deed and it doesn't show him picking up the book. Um, and so I thought maybe, you know, we, he doesn't care about the book at all. But turns out, secretly, he picked up the book because of the scene that we're about to get to, which is the most essential scene going forward uh, in, the, in, this, in the next season. Uh, Gravity Falls Gossiper, now with less typos. Little Gideon in the big house. <laughs> he is in jail, of course. He could use a timeout. Oh. oh, bro, don't do that to your son. I guess he is a very spoiled son. Bro, this just keeps going. This is a page we've seen before, but squash with human face and emotions. He's gorgeous. <laughs> Seeds with warts. Okay, future generations of pumpkin men. Weird. And then there's a code. And it's safe to say that code also matches up with this, this code right here. These have to be something. These absolutely have to be something. What we could do is see if we can find any here that have like identical symbols, like this. This box with a dot in it and this W, that appears here and it appears here as well. So it must be a common word like of or to or something like that. Like we, we need to use tools like that to try and figure out what it's saying. I think we could do that, but I'm not gonna spend today doing that. Even here, we have a backwards E 
is one letter and it's a word. So it's either an A or an I. That's interesting. We'll, we, will, we will think about this. We will think about this maybe in a future video. Uh, but I, I imagine at some point we're going to get some sort of cipher to figure that out. Or it's a case of getting the book and then you get a cipher to figure it out. Because I'm sure in the book there's going to be even more codes like that. Uh, oh my gosh, there's a, there's a code on that pipe that I completely missed on my first watch through. Let's solve that. Okay, I make that out to be E-L-O-O-L-V-Z-D-W-F-K-L-Q-J. It's a toss up of what this could be. I'm thinking it could be a Caesar cipher. And the reason I say that is because there's a double O, uh, which is an L, so it's a double L. Oh, Bill is, Bill, it, what is Bill? What is Bill? Tell me what Bill is. I'm trying to do this as quickly as I can. Bill is watching. Oh, that's a cool code. That's a cool code, Bill is watching. I love that. Love it, love it, love it. Okay. I'm glad we found that one too. That, that could have been missed quite easily, but like... I don't know how I missed that, to be honest, on a first watch. Like... Oh, I guess... I guess it's quite easy to miss. I don't know. And then we get into the basement, right? That's what I'm calling it right now, but... It could have a better name. Like, the lab or something. There's three floors to it. We've only seen one of them, I guess. Or unless we're on the first floor. Um, alchemy, I would imagine. Again, Stan's tattoo. Good to note. Could be more to that than meets the eye. Uh, okay, he's going down. Yeah, he starts on le level one. So there's level two that we haven't seen. That's good to note. There's, like, sound waves... Uh, looks like coordinates in a way, like on a map. Like if you if you look on uh, on like on like navy maps, um, they show like they have like dots that like vibrate uh, or pulsate. Sorry, that looks like a pressure tank, like a uh, or like a Geiger meter. No, a Geiger is more like a digital meter, isn't it? Geiger counter. This is a camera of gravity falls in some way. Again, sound waves. Again, looks like a map. Um, this is the shack, and then this is like right, like circumference. <sighs> these these are like different areas. I don't know. It's like cartography. Don't know what this means. I don't even want. I I don't even want to begin with that. Uh, nothing else here. Okay, the uh, on the first watch, the first thing I saw was this picture. Obviously, he goes in here and he reaches for the book. This, this is so out of place, by the way. Oh, it's a light. Okay, I thought he literally like glitched through. I didn't see this light on the first watch. It looks like it's just come in. Here's the hand. It does have five fingers, but I think that's just an animation thing. Uh. Nothing else important about the other books, I don't think. Okay, so let's go back to this. So here, this looks like the portal, but it's also reminiscent of Bill Cipher. Here's an infinity. That is a phi, which is the golden ratio. I'll show you that. So a phi looks like this, and it's the golden ratio. So, golden ratio. So if you think about like the Fibonacci sequence, the Fibonacci sequence uh, has the golden ratio uh, the golden ratio, one plus, uh, root five all over two. Uh, and that's essentially saying, how can I explain this in a, in a good way? Uh, basically there, there is pattern to the chaos of nature. And that pattern is, is the golden ratio. It, it this number appears literally everywhere. 1.618. Uh, if you think about, this is a cool tip. If you think about, uh, miles as as opposed to kilometers i believe it's one okay wait 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 wait. i need to figure this out so obviously the fibonacci sequence goes one one two three five eight thirteen it's adding the two previous numbers so one plus one is two 
one plus two is three, three plus two is five, etc. Uh, let's go with the three five, so that's a sequence three, then five. Uh, basically three miles is equal to around about five kilometers. I'll show you. Um, three miles is around about five kilometers. Obviously it's not amazingly accurate. Then you put in five and it's going to give you eight kilometers. There you go. Eight kilometers or eight miles is around 13. Then you put 13 in and it's going to give you 21. So that's a really quick way of say of thinking about like how, how much is this many miles? I can tell you right now that if you have 21 miles, that is around about 34 kilometers. Here you go. There you go. So that's that's a like a, a use of this thing. Uh, what I can tell you is golden ratio just appears everywhere in nature. So I think the reason phi is there, and phi is the symbol that's most commonly used for the golden ratio. There's also an E here, which is Euler's number, which I don't think would have any particular use in this. But I think I think the golden ratio is an interesting thing to have here because the golden ratio is... I would say the golden ratio is like nature's number. Um, it's, it's like also like a progression, like this, this thing plus this thing is equal to this total thing. Um, I don't know, it's, it's, it is a weird thing to have there, but just think, think of it like nature's number. The most interesting thing that I'm seeing here is, uh, is this. So this, first of all, looks like a portal. More specifically, it looks like a wormhole. You can see like the netting of this, right? That implies this is this is the netting, the lattice of space-time. Um, and so it's almost like we're traveling through this portal in the space-time continuum. Um, how can I show this? Here is what I'm looking for. Okay, so you can you can tell, right? This this looks so similar. I don't even know if you can see that, sorry. This looks so similar. Or you can see down here, like the these all look really similar to what we saw. Right? Like that that is undeniably the same uh, because of the netting and stuff. So this is basically, Einstein had these uh, field equations that he couldn't solve. And in the middle of war, there's this guy, I forgot his name, that managed to solve it um, in a really simplistic way because obviously the universe is in three dimensions or more than three dimensions. But uh, he, he solved it in like one dimension. But either way, he solved these field equations and it came up with like this sort of theory, I guess. Uh, it, it became the birth of like the relationship between black holes, white holes and different universes. You have like this universe here. You can only travel up, like upwards is time essentially. Um, so if you start here, everything that you can see is gonna be in the universe. This is like light distance across. So light will travel this way. This is all that you can ever see in the universe. You can go all the way up here to the end of your life. You can go all the way here to, yeah, whatever. But you can also go into a black hole and then you will be lost forever. But uh, theoretical physicists believe there is this, this kind of gap between a black hole and, and the opposite, which is a white hole, which we will never see ever because you, you can't get to a white hole. There's this gap between, which is like a portal to a different universe. This is like a wormhole, but it, it's with that's all that's like a theoretical. This is a cool diagram. Uh, it's like a theoretical thing. I'm, I'm talking way too much science um, that I don't even really fully understand. I would suggest watching Veritasium's video on it. I think that is a really, really good video. Um, that explains it really well. But what I'm thinking right here is there is going to be some proper sci-fi stuff happening in season two. Like we're going to be traveling maybe to different universes. I think even we we might have kind of sort, we've seen that almost with Bill Cipher uh, with like the Dreamscapers episode where we were in Grandcool's head. We're going to see that sort of stuff more but it might just be alternate universes. We're gonna see different versions of Dipper and Mabel, maybe even, um, maybe even, maybe we'll even see them die in a few universes, but they'll be reborn because, I don't know. I don't, I'm just like theorizing with like this tiny little diagram here, but this, this has big implications. I'll tell you that much, right? We're gonna be seeing parallel universes, I think. And I think that this portal is a wormhole 
into those parallel universes. Uh, let's just see the books lined up. Um, we don't have any more code. Oh, wait. We do. <laughs> Huge code right here. Uh, this is what we've taken. This is what we've taken. Okay. So let's take this. And then when he puts all the books together, he is able to start up this portal. Funky symbols here. I'd imagine they are alchemy. Uh... Yeah, we've seen that before on Bill Cipher's head. Man, I love this series. <laughs> I absolutely love this series. Let's just see if there's anything else here. I don't know if there's going to be any extra codes or anything. This is what we've seen already. This is a really cool shot for the end of the end of the series. End of the season, sorry. I, I know it's season, not series. Uh, have we seen the... Okay, I, we, I think we need to... We need to take this. I already know this is going to be an A126. That image just appeared out of nowhere. Okay. This is an A126. Uh, 18, 5, 22, 5, 18, 19, 5. All right. Just like the good old days, we put a code in here. And then we do it manually because I'm not good enough with this. Uh, uh, 5, 18, 19... Reverse, reverse, reverse. 20, this is gonna be the, I think. Yeah. Uh, and then three, nine, 16, eight, five, 18. Ciphers? 19. Ciphers, reverse the ciphers. Reverse the ciphers. Caesar at Oh, okay. Yeah, never mind. I'm being dumb. That's just how you solve. That's how you get to search for the blind eye. Because to get to that, you do A1Z1, A1Z26 at bash Caesar, which is the ciphers reversed. Okay, okay. <laughs> Amazing work, Alex Hirsch and everybody else who worked on Gravity Falls. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Love this shot. This is uh, this coming back again. And then it's panning over. It's it's just panning over pages we've already seen. Loads of alchemy symbols here. This is, yeah, the big bat page. Trust no one. One of the first pages that we saw in the series. Love it. Absolutely love it. And it fades out. Wow, I love how the last page that we look at is one of the first pages we saw, and it is specifically Trust No One. It seems like going into episode number, or season number two, it seems like that is going to be needed to be remembered more than ever, right? I don't think we can trust Grunkle anymore. Or, oh, it's... It's so tricky because Grunkle is such a complex character. Like, he seems like such a simple character. Like, he's just a meanie. He's just like, don't trust him. But he he's so complex because he is a family guy. He is... He does care about his family. He actually does. He, he has a heart. And that's why he's so complex. Uh, strangely enough, right? He's loving. But he does have this dark side. And what is his motive? Like, what is he doing? I think this is probably the time where we theorize. I don't want to keep you for much longer because I already know this video is like five hours long or something. But, and of course my my throat is getting ill. You can sound me getting worse and worse by the minute, so I need to say my voice. But a few theories, right? First of all, writer of the books. My best bet right now is Old Man McGucket if it isn't someone we've already met. And the reason for that is because basically everyone we've met and everyone who's a major character right now is in the wheel that we see in the intro except old man mcguckett and I, I have a feeling that it's it's he has a six-fingered hand or something he does oh he has a bandage he has a bandage wait 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 <laughs> he is earlier in this episode right he is i think he's building the thing uh can we see oh my god i literally just saw the sasquatch what uh where is his hand where is his hand? I can't believe I'm doing this again. Uh, let me see. Let me see your hand, bro. Ah, oh, damn it, he's got gloves on. 
I think he has a bandage over one of his hands, so maybe he has like a secret sick finger. I don't know. Uh, but there you go. Old Man McGucket, I think, is the book author. Again, if we haven't met the author already. Um, wait, that sentence didn't make sense. You know what I mean, though. Like, w that's my best guess right now, is that he's the author. Um, what I've noticed as well is that there's a lot of... I think the fact that Stan was so... He, he cared so much about this... Okay, actually, I have a major theory that I've just thought of right now. He has this, this wax figure of himself that he loves so much. Like, he doesn't even care about other people that much when he has the wax figure around him. And there was that guy in the snowy house that we think is um, young Grunkle... But it could be someone else. It could very well be something else, someone else. And I think there are other things as well that led me to believe that there could be two stands. Uh, oh yeah, the intro screen. Um, there's one with the glasses, one with the, the shape on his hat. There, there could be two stands. Uh, whether it's like a clone of Stan or it's Stan's twin or something like that. I think that there's two stands. Um, and I think that maybe... The relevance of this whole show is the fact that Stan is actually looking for his lost twin or clone or whatever. Probably twin, right? He's probably looking for his lost twin, uh, which would tie in because Dipper and Mabel are twins as well. So there's like this whole twin twin stuff going on. Like it's, it's all paralleling and it's all fitting in nicely. Maybe this is all just a quest for his lost twin. Maybe. Uh... What's Gideon's motive for all of this? I guess just power. I guess. He just wants to make Gideon land and, and his ego is so big that he, he just wants all that power over people. Um, so, yeah, I guess... I mean, that's my best guess right now, right? I don't have a clue with anything else. I think that that's probably what's going to happen. I think we're... Maybe we, we're going to meet Stan's, um, Stan's other half... <laughs> in a future episode. Uh, what else was I going to say? I think one one theory that I think right now, which, to be honest, is just complete. It's probably a huge headcanon. Like, this is the theory that I believe the least. But I'm thinking that Robbie isn't what he seems. I'm thinking that the whole trust no one, it could apply to multiple people here. I'm thinking maybe Robbie isn't what he seems. I'm thinking Robbie is a zombie. The reason I think that is because it was foreshadowed in episode one when they thought that Norman was a zombie, but he actually turned out to be gnomes. Well then, who's the real zombie? I think it could be Robbie. Uh, he had zombies rule, ri zombies rule written in the car uh, in that inconvenience in the episode. Uh, I guess he, he even he he looks zombie like. He's very he's also like very pale and. I don't know. He, he got. He's got like a very dry voice. I want. I actually. Let me go back to the inconvenience in episode. It's also. It, it's the heart as well. The scarred heart. I. I think it could represent zombie. Um. I also want to go back to you know when they all like turn into skeletons. Uh, I want to see if zombie skeleton is different almost. Uh. So here. Because zombie, because uh, Robbie obviously is is quite different to the rest of his gang. I don't think there's anything different there. I mean, the uh, the fact that he does have a skeleton kind of throws this out the wind. Although I guess zombies have skeletons, right? I don't know. I don't know, man. Uh, but yeah, I think. I think that's probably it for today's video. Guys, this was like, I don't know how long this is. Uh, I think I recorded for about like eight hours in total or something like that. And I think this has probably been cut down to like five or six hours. But when I say thank you so much for watching all the way through, I genuinely, genuinely mean it. Like watch time is everything. Um, I, I, I can't believe that you are that entertained <laughs> by me looking through 
each episode for tiny little things, but I, I genuinely really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. And thank you so much for all the support that you've ever had for uh, for Gravity Falls content. I'm going to be moving on to the shorts next, so stay tuned. That will be coming in the next few days. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you very, very soon. Peace out. Bye.